Peace to the saints. It's the big homie, the one and only Fax Kellerman, Genghis Khan, the boogeyman of this YouTube thing. Yiddig. And I was going to ignore this, but it was brought to my attention so many times. And I find that the internet is monolithically against fresh and fit. I said, let me look into this. I bet it's a touch more complex than people are making it out to be. So I thought this would be a fascinating opportunity to share some sass and culture with people. Yit it. So we're going to go through a balanced analysis of the situation. And anytime there's a problem or disagreement, you always want to go to the root of the conflict, which we shall do. And if you've been following my work, you will know that anytime I analyze someone's speech, behavior, even their appearance, whether it's a Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson, what have you, it's always very thorough. And I imagine providing nuance that no one else on YouTube has the IQ to provide or even the experience. Because let's be real, most of these guys are phony. It's the big homie. Get it. Now let's get to this work. Oh, and by the way, peace to the saints this morning. 8 a.m. bright and early, went and met up with the saints. You dig? The assassin came together, and we got in some serious fitness work for free, not charging anyone, not acting like it's a meet and greet. We just met up men and got in some exercise early this morning. It was a beautiful thing. We're going to do it again on September 4th. You dig? So I do want to invite you all to join us in health because I'm here to help grow your health and make sure that life is good for you and prosperous. Let's get to this work. You dig? And I always like to hear things from the horse's mouth, first and foremost. And secondly, I like to always go to the root. So my first question, becoming trying to become informed on this, is, well, where did it all start? Huh? Firstly, I want to point out to you guys that I have not familiarized myself with the background information. So I got a number of videos that are queued up. We're going to watch it together. I'm going to give you my real-time feedback and perspective. You dig? So understand that none of it is scripted. None of it is previewed. I'm going to watch this with you. We're going to look at the root of the issue, and we're going to see who's really right and who's really wrong bit by bit. And what I can promise you is that even when you look at a supervillain, they're not all evil. When you look at a superhero, they're not all good. So let us take a dynamic view of this and come to an understanding because I can assure you there is much for all of us to learn in this situation. And that is why I'm picking this up, not because it's trendy. If I wanted to pick it up when it was starting, that would have been the wisest time. You dig? Shout out to Donald. Comes in via cash app. He writes, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Via PayPal, Samson wrote, peace to the saints. I want to express my appreciation for the videos you put out this week. They hold invaluable wisdom. The style of the video makes me anticipate your audiobook, The Black Box. Um, keep doing great things. And by the way, I have not announced it because I've been anxious about putting out products because there's so many scammers and, and fraudsters who try to buy things and then dispute it with their credit card. It's weird. We get like 2% of our sales or that. I almost don't want to deal with it because the money isn't worth it to me. You dig? But we did just complete the audio book. It is seven and a half hours long of pure wisdom, strategy, and game from someone who has risen out of significant poverty. So anyways, the link for that is in the description. We've already uh, had a lot of folks buy it who are members because I pre-released it to them. Um, so I did want to acknowledge that since someone sent a PayPal asking about the audio book. Shout out to Nathaniel Reed. He writes, peace to the saints, peace to the saints. And Leroy sends through a question, which I will answer because it's quite a simple question. He writes, peace to the saints, question, over the phone, how do I show a girl I'm interested without coming across too strong? Well, Leroy, why do you need to show her that you're interested? Nine out of nine, she knows you're interested because most guys want to get laid. So as long as a female has a vagina, she can assume you're interested at some level. You should introspect, meaning self-examine, and ask, why are you rushing to tell this girl, I am I like you, I'm interested. Bruh, soak up this ism. I tell you to keep them guessing and wondering. You really want to flip the dynamic so they chase you, not you chasing them. 
Oh, so please, you seem like you probably don't have a membership at patreon.com slash the saint in the center because these are relatively rudimentary aspects of the game. So you need to soak that ism up. You heard me. It's damn near a public service telling them to get that membership. I mean, damn. We have peace in a super chat. He said peace to the saints. And we have Nate Harris. He said, just got my man and woman shirt. Dope, Saint. That's beautiful. And I actually did not include the link. If any of the Saints have the link, uh, maybe it's in my link tree. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share that right now. But you guys know the rainbow folks, they have their flag. But the question is, what is the flag for the mentally healthy people? And so I put together a brand called Man and Woman, and it has a symbol of a man and woman where we are natural partners. And that's kind of our flag. So some super player gear. I'm going to share that with you guys. I think it's in this link tree. If not, you'll just have to get it when you get it. We have Ray in a super chat. He said, shout out to the black men doing better and not just claiming the future they deserve, but acting on it every day. Mm. I just purchased my first property. I'm so excited. Hashtag under 30. Hashtag New England. That's a beautiful thing. And we are so happy to see people prospering and we wish you more success. So all of the saints, please, you know, give him a commendation for that because the more people within our community grow and succeed, the more they create businesses, have products and services, it benefits all of us. True community is about supporting one another financial, financially, emotionally, and otherwise. So thank you for sharing that good news because we love to hear good news. It's so rare that you get good news because you turn on Fox and CNN. All they want to tell you about is how the Taliban is going crazy, raping and molesting everybody. We have another super chat, but I do want to clear something up. Someone wrote, YouTube gets the content before we do on Patreon, Saint. But there's a lot of exclusive stuff on Patreon that YouTube doesn't no, see No, all. that's not true, actually. There are way more pieces of content on Patreon than there are on YouTube further. There are a lot of pieces of content that never make it onto YouTube because YouTube is censoring content. And also a lot of content that I make that is highly personal, meaning recorded phone conversations, exclusive videos are on Patreon and they've never once come on to YouTube further. My Dr. Phil questions, which you use to basically open up a woman's mind and open up her heart to you, that's never made it to YouTube. So that doesn't quite add up, Saint. Hey, we have Shua Edgerton. He sent a super chat. He said, we perceive people based off our reference points. Whoever we deem heroes or villains is based on our own personal mm. experiences. New to the Peace. Mm, peace to the saint. That was a meaningful comment. And it's hap It's good that we get people who are new to our work because undoubtedly when you measure up my catalog against your favorite YouTuber, you'll find that they are all my inferiors. And I say that humbly. That's how big the gap is. Just keeping it real out here. So everyone, welcome the, the saint into this thing of ours. Shout out to Steve Joseph who comes through via Cash App. He writes, peace to the saints. Thank you for greeting me warmly. Steve Joseph is one of our emperors. That's a beautiful thing. Get it. We have EJ535 sent a super chat. He said, we got that work in today. Definitely coming back. So he must have been there with you this morning. As I said, when you study my life, you can read about my life in the black box. The ebook is linked below if you want to save money. When you study my actual life and when you listen to my words, you will find there is tremendous alignment in what I have lived and what I tell you. I never advise you on things that are based on my imagination. When I give you business advice, it's because I've run businesses throughout the United States, as well as Korea, as well as Puerto Rico, as well as China. When I give you advice about this game, it's because I've been cracking some of the baddest chicks you ever saw since I was about 10 years old. You dig? Not slaying them at 10, just catching them. I didn't start slaying them until I was 16. Um, but I basically tell you from a point of expertise and I have enough integrity that if you ask me about something that is beyond my expertise, I say, you should speak to someone who's knowledgeable in that field. I can recommend these people or I don't know, but I encourage you to talk to someone who really knows about that. That level of realness and authenticity you will find consistent. And that's why today at 8 a.m., the Saints got together and got in a workout, even though I didn't go to bed to 4 a.m. because I'm a man of my word. And I like to keep my word. You did. So we want to thank everyone who's really living in a saintly way because it adds to the goodness of the world. And we are reforming global culture, culture around the entire planet Earth. You did. 
Oh, shout out to Adam. Did you see that one? I, it just came through on my Talk mind. to me. Adam said, never able to catch these lives due to the time zone. Got to get some sleep and now, sadly, but life has been progressing ever since discovering you. Peace. That's a beautiful thing. And true to my word, that's one of the saints in Sweden. And as I said, we have a global movement in which we are reforming culture so that we can all enjoy life more. And um, I appreciate him showing the love. And I hope you do get a good night of sleep because that's core to functioning at a high level. A lot of folks say, Marquette, how do you operate on four hours of sleep or three hours of sleep? That's me. And the three sins Bible, three sins Quran, three sins Torah, I say, number one, be yourself. Three hours or four hours, I might be crisp. But if you're not, get eight hours. Sins number two, be good to yourself, meaning do the things that nourish you. Since number three, be good to good people, which is to say when people show you love, show them love back. You dig? I used to go around and give out money to homeless people. And then I realized these might not be good people. And me empowering them with a dollar might be doing something destructive in the world. You dig? Okay, we have Dennis Herrera in a super chat. He says, finally caught a live. Peace to the saints. Peace Copy the saints. audiobook ASAP. I've been waiting. A lot of people have been waiting for the audiobook, saints. It's seven and a half hours. It is a great theatrical work. And I truly believe once you finish it, you will say to yourself, I probably owe Marquette some money. One, because it's seven and a half hours, but two, because there's an endless store of value you will find in that wisdom. And I hope that you constantly go back and reference it. Um, so thank you very much for, for sharing that, Saint. We have Josh Marengo. He said, looking for your wisdom on this one. I'm sure there are many lessons to learn from this one. You seem like a That's contrarian, true. so looking forward to the analysis. I would never describe myself as a contrarian. In actual fact, I think it's fantastic when we can all get along and be on the same page. However, the only reason I might sometimes appear contrarian is because given superior IQ and a more of a critical lens, I'm able to see what other people don't see. And when they experience these blind spots, sometimes merely pointing something out might appear to be contrarian when really I'm just trying to give sight to the blind. You dig? So I will be adding some perspective, but I think there are probably some basics we can all agree on. And then there's some other things that are values-based that people have overlooked, and we're going to surely address it. Before we carry on, someone wrote, when does it drop? I'm assuming they're referencing the audio The book. audio book? Oh, baby, the audio book dropped. I dropped it to the members first because I always show love to those who show love to me first and foremost. And it is officially dropping as of now because I just put the link to the audio book in the description. All right. Well, saints, let us go ahead and get started with this first video clip. And the first clip I chose to start with is the one from when Abba and Preach first went on the Fresh and Fit podcast, because I can only assume that this is their first public interaction. And so I thought that if we're to understand the root of the conflict, this might be a good place to start. And so we're going to do this. I'll kind of give you a sneak preview of the itinerary. We'll look, apparently Abba and Preach went on the Fresh and Fit podcast two times. So we'll look at the first two appearances. And then after that, my understanding is that uh, Abba and Preach did a bit of a critique video of their Fresh and Fit initial appearance. And so we'll take a look at that and see if they're, how they behaved, how they portrayed themselves, how they portrayed Fresh and Fit. And we'll kind of, you know, see what the root of the problem may have been for both parties. And then we'll talk about some of the reaction that occurred on the Fresh and Fit side and the Abba and Preach side. People have mentioned throwing hands. As you know, I'm really with the shits in terms of throwing hands both in the ring and out of the ring. And so I'll give some commentary on that and also just on, on violence and internet beef in general, because I think it's worth clarifying because um, there's a lot of babble. So as men, we should talk about you know, what the rules of engagement should be there. And then I'll give a summary on you know how we should basically bring this thing to a close. And this is all according to Sassin culture, you dig? This is not manosphere here. This is the Sassin, you hear me? And I want to point out that when people mention the black manosphere, a, black is such an amorphous term in as much as would you take someone who's Italian and German and mesh them together as though they don't have very distinct cultures? You look at Preach, who I'm, I understand is of Haitian ancestry, um, and my understanding is that Abba is a Canadian national, and Fresh, I understand, is Caribbean in origin, 
And Myron, I don't know exactly what his ethnicity is, but I want to say he looks like he could be Sudanese. He could be somewhere from the, the Horn of Africa. So these are all different varieties of black that are relatively different. So, you know, black is an amorphous term that almost doesn't have any meaning. When you say manosphere, just because you have a primarily male audience, now we're in the manosphere, now we're a community. I don't think that's true because I see a lot of the people in the manosphere look like they're eating their own. And I advised you not to raise your hand. I advised you to speak up, didn't I? Yeah, so All right. So first, we want to commend Dennis Herrera, who said he's copying the audiobook ASAP because he just copped it. Oh, he just ASAP. copped it? And that's what I like. He's a man of his word. That goes very far with me. We have Adam came back with another super chat. He said, F it, got to get another one in. Bought the apartment, finally took over the personal yeah. training business and about to build a new gym for it next year. That's ambition. Keep it up, Saint. We're yeah. rooting for you. We have Alfonso in a super chat. He said, Marquette, thank you for being an example of a doer. Blessings your way. Question, if someone disrespects you in person, do you calculate whether to confront immediately or engage later? Love, Saint. Thank you for that question. If someone disrespects me in person, number one, you have to estimate a couple things. Firstly, what can I get away with in this situation? What happens if I allow this disrespect to escalate? What might they do? Um, what is the impact of their disrespect? Those are some questions you should ask yourself because, for example, say you're in Los Angeles and West Side Denver Lane, bang, bang, watch your neck. If you know where West Side Denver Lane is in L.A., if somebody disrespects you there, well, you better go all the way out because that little bit of disrespect can escalate to you getting robbed and killed. So you don't have time to play around. If you're in a civilized environment and someone disrespects you, you might be able to just let it go because it didn't impact your pocketbook, didn't affect your family, didn't hurt your, your lady. So you can just let it go. So context is very important. But me, I can tell you, I personally don't like letting things go if I can avoid it. And surely if I know that, OK, I can see this person again or I have their, their legal name or something where we can follow up on this. I absolutely want to follow up. And if you uh, read my book, there's a chapter called Swing First. That teaches you a little bit about how to deal with disrespect. There's another chapter entitled How to Get Your Jaw Broken. That also teaches you about how to deal with disrespect. And at the end of each chapter, I explain to you why I chose a particular road to address disrespect. And I was not always right. Sometimes I describe myself as being dead wrong. Other times I describe myself as saying, hey, Sometimes you're despicable and you have to look in the mirror and acknowledge that you are a despicable human being and you must change. It's not everybody else out there. They're not the problems. You're not in a toxic world. You're the one. You're toxic. And you got to deal with yourself sometimes. Thank you for that question. Him. We have CG Cap. He said he just copied the audiobook and he did. And so did Shout Steve out to Joseph. CG Cap, Steve we, Joseph, real We have Jabrizi sent a super chat. He said, Peace, this is going to be good. And then we have Dennis Herrera came back. He's the one that copped the audiobook. And he said, he's saying, do we get the audiobook through email? I bought it, but it froze after I completed the transaction. You're going to get the audiobook in two ways. Uh, number one, you'll get a link and we'll make sure that you get the link. And anyone who's ever done business with us, they can attest that our customer service is A1. Promise you. I pride myself on customer service. So number one, you'll get the link to download it. If you'd like to download it, you want to own it, so to speak. You'll also get a link to stream it. And so you'll have access to marquetism.com or the assassin.com where you can just stream it and listen to it, you know, from your phone or whatever you'd like to listen to it to um, listen to it from. So have no fear. We'll make sure that you're all set. I can do that for him right now. I've read this next super chat. And Bridge is going to take care of that. We have Neil Hall. He came in strong. He said, it's been a minute since I caught a live and super busy with real life. Keep dropping them gems. Absolutely. And Bridget, I just sent the password to you. You can also share that with him and share that link to the assassin.com to the audiobook page. Okay. And he can use that as well. Fantastic. You caught up? I'm caught up, yeah. All right. Okay, Saints, let's hear from the first appearance of Abba and Preach. And I do want to give you a little bit of context. And full disclosure, I've never watched Abba and Preach's content before today. Today was my first introduction to them. So I will be telling you all of my thoughts as they come in, um, which is not my nature. My nature is to think before I speak, but I'm going to engage with you as though you're inside of my brain. How do you, how do you, how do you guys meet? Oh, uh, Preach, you, you can tell them. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can tell them. Basically, uh, I'm a dancer. Uh, uh, Abba is a dancer. With the, uh, I'm the dancer. Woo! 
Soul Train. My first thought, so we're basically playing their first interview on Fresh and Fit from the beginning. He said, how did you guys meet? And my my boy, he said, well, I'm a dancer and he's a dancer. So my first thought just off the rip is like, these ain't the most masculine guys out there. That's my first thought. Then my second thought is, you know, your boy messed with the salsa dance and the bachata, merengue, all that good stuff. Maybe they talking about the Latin dance. But my first thought was like, these might not be the most masculine cats out there. But then again, who really is in the manosphere? It's just me. That's why everybody's scared of me. Carrying on. Teacher, hold up, hold up. I'm in Miami, so they hear dance, so they might get the wrong idea. Street dance, street dance, street dance, street dance. Okay. Yeah, so street dance, uh, uh, street uh, dance. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And let me just stop again to, as I said, I'm giving you the real time perspective. Now, number one, uh, I think uh, Abba is the gentleman who looks more East African. The, the more fair of the two. And just upon looking at him, he looks like a fairly honest guy, looks like a humble gentleman. I mean, you went on a Miami podcast in an African style shirt, like you own some whole other stuff, like you're in your own lane, you're comfortable, you're confident, you're not putting on airs trying to pretend to be someone else. So immediately I look at Abba and I say, this seems like a very genuine individual. And I respect that because I pride myself on realness. So I can identify with that feeling I get. But as a wise man, we don't live life based on feelings now, do we? The other gentleman, whom I understand is Haitian, um, he has something tied around his neck, which I think is interesting. I am assuming it's his trademark of some sort. He seems to have a very expressive, expressive face, which I would expect from a Haitian. Um, so, so far, that's my uh, perceptive. They both seem like normal guys. No, so far, nothing weird. I mean, other than the fact that they said they dance, we're about to find out what kind of dance. Uh, let's all pray that they don't say we're twerkers or strippers, or they were in that that last music video. What was the old boy name that did the Old Town Road? Oh, Lil Nas X. That. It was in the, Lil, the last Lil Nas X video. Let's pray to God they don't say that. Carrying on. Buckets, motherfuckers. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. We, we street dance. Yeah, we've not as corny as that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We, we treat we treat dance we uh social dance you know salsa bachata merengue all that uh you know so and basically all right look check this out now preach holla at the big homie man like now you cool with me now in the big homies book you legit as soon as you said you mess with the salsa the bachata the merengue now you a fia issue down to the gristle you dig in fact, just last night, I was messing with the salsa. Uh, Jabri and I, we pulled up to the salsa spot. It was not popping, but, you know, we got a little work in. You dig? So that's a beautiful thing. Shout out to him. So far, so good. I'm the guy that I'm the go to guy when it comes to hosting events and battles in, in Montreal, basically. Oh, and so I, I host a lot of the, the battles that we have in Montreal, the dance battles we have in Montreal. And ABBA happens to film a lot of those events. Either fil He used to film a lot of those events, either filming, doing the recap. or Okay, I'm going to stop that right there um, because I'm bored. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm bored. Uh, now that they're going into these details about Montreal, I'm like, eh, Montreal is not like a super popping city. Um, so I'm a little bit bored. So I'm going to just go ahead and stop that right there. And what I'm going to do, are you, you getting that work done for the saint who purchased? Yeah, I just said it to him, yeah. Okay, so Dennis, you, you're straight, by the way. And as I say, our customer service is A1. And we do thank you for the support. He said a super chat. He said, how was your experience on the FNF podcast? Also, I enjoyed watching you on there. Fantastic. So Key is asking me about my experience on the Fresh and Fit podcast. And it's important to give context. So I really do want to address that. It is worth noting for those who do not know, when I went on the Fresh and Fit podcast at the time, I was gaining 2,000 subs a day. I think I was probably at like 50,000 subs at the time, getting 2,000 a day, really high level of virality. And at the time, I think maybe they had 15,000, something like that. And it was set up because I got a DM from Fresh. And I didn't know him from Adam. I just happened to read his DM, which I'm not fortunate enough to get a chance to read all of mine, but his made it through late. I, I was looking for another DM and I saw his. Um, so I responded a couple months late and he said, Hey, we want to get you out to Miami. And I said, okay, you know, I'd be happy to support your work. No problem. And truth be told, I went there solely to benefit them. 
uh, because number one, I have a great appreciation for someone on their come up. And number two, I'm a true believer that if you can do some good for someone and it costs you very little, you should do it. And it did cost me, which is to say that um, in full disclosure, and I've not discussed with them that I'm going to share this with you, but I am sharing it. They covered my flight and my hotel. And I brought my assistant with me, so I had to cover her flight and her hotel, which is to say I was probably losing money showing up there. And of course, I was not compensated for my time. So I went there truly out of the kindness of my heart. And one, I kicked a tremendous amount of game on that podcast. And if you watch that podcast, you'll find that there's never been one since that has had as much game. And I haven't even checked the other one since. I'm that confident. You did. Moreover, um, that podcast that I went on, they had the highest live viewership that they ever had up to that point. So it was certainly me lending our strength to them. So it was a true favor to them. And I received, received essentially no benefit. Um, and that's because of all of you, the saints. So I truly appreciate you all for always supporting what I do. Um, so that was that. That was the last time I saw those guys in person. I've not seen them since. I've not been back to Florida since. Um, around, uh, since then, you know, Fresh would reach out every now and then. Myron, I never actually really communicated with. So Fresh would reach out periodically. Since they've had their ascent, I've reached out to Fresh a few times just off of some like, hey, good work. Keep it up. Stay focused because I am truly happy to see people thrive and succeed. And just earlier today, one of my emperors, Brandon, I just sent him a message and I said, hey, man, you're on the verge of earning everything you ever wanted to earn for your family. Keep your eye on the ball right now. Keep your eyes on the prize because he he has a business and he's out of inventory. He got like two units left. And I'm like, bro, as a businessman, as a hustler, we can't ever be out of inventory. If you, You're not a P if you ain't got a hoe. You're not a drug dealer if you don't have drugs. You hear me? So being that you sell this product and you out of product, get your get back focus, baby. And that's a part of my work is to make people successful. And so we have a consultation every month. And so I just reached out to him the same way. I also reach out to Fresh and Fit or whomever else crosses my mind. I want people to be successful. Okay, hey, super chat. We have fully, fully, fully. Yes. He said 1K viewers and 300 likes get the likes up. That's is, right. We do need to get the likes. likes. Now he's a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Saints, I really don't want to have to do a musical break. So go ahead and show that love. You okay, dig? The big I homie. Isaiah Hunter sent a super chat. He said, hey, Marquette, I bought the black box earlier this year. I got my hand on the audio book immediately yesterday. Thank mm -hmm. you for always dropping gems. Hey, I appreciate the support, Isaiah. And you know that it's a great work when he cops the book and then turns around and cops the audio book. So that's love. And that's a testament to the quality of the work. And I can tell you, as one who is very well read in the classics, Dostoyevsky, uh, 1984, The Richest Man in Babylon, Machiavelli, anything you name, I've read it. Even the garbage like Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Power, I've read all of it. My book is better than theirs, for real. Okay, we have Daniel John. He said, haven't caught a live in months. Shout out to the big homie for staying consistent and real for the whole year I've been following you. Inspirational. Peace to Daniel John. And Daniel John is also a real one. And that's one thing that's important to me is that I know these folks who reach out because I try to take out my time to meet you and to know you because the assassin is about all of us. It's not just about me. I'm not trying to be a star or a leader. I want to be a part of community with you because we grow together. You dig? Okay, Dennis Herrera came up with his third super chat. He said, customer service is A1. Thank you. Thank you. See, you said that customer service is A1. And as a businessman and as a hustler, customer service is everything to me. That creates clients, not customers. Okay, we have Shua Edgerton sent his second super chat. I'm going to kind of change the wording of this. Yeah, this try to stop here. being vulgar because I already curse too much. He, he's talking about the alphabet people. Oh, the rainbow is, folk, is the, piece, the people who eat Skittles. The, letters. I just the, alphabet. the people who've eaten uh, gummy bears and... and Okay. Sure. Yeah. He said it's a gang and just like all gangs, an in entity will natural combat that. Great examples of men and women should be that entity. Thoughts. Is he asking me what type of men and women should combat them? He's saying they are a gang and just like all gangs, an entity will natural combat that. Great mm -hmm. examples of men and women should be that entity. Thoughts. So I guess he's saying great men and women should combat that. Yeah. So in short, 
he's essentially saying that on the side of mental illness, the people who can't tell if they're a male or a female, that group of people, he's saying that there should be someone to combat that. And the truth is that this work has been left to us. When I say us, I'm talking about real men. Real men stand for something and stand up for what they stand for. The problem is that too many of us have been quiet at home on the computer complaining, but we haven't actually done anything. And we know we've not done anything when the schools in California are teaching history of the Skittle people along with your core subjects so that your children in their youth, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, are learning this dogma as though it's religion. And so the same way you find a devout Muslim or a devout Christian because they learned the story of Jesus or the story of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when they were a young child and they believe it because they heard it so early and they heard it so many times, that is the same indoctrination that is occurring by the Skittle people. And the question is, what are you doing? Because complaining is not doing. huh? And that's the problem is that men are acting like females because they think babbling gets things done in the world. No, it doesn't. It just makes you feel more relaxed because you get to express yourself and get the endorphins from running your big mouth when really much of life is about action. Otto von Bismarck stated, the great questions of our day will not be solved by speeches and majority votes, but by blood and iron, huh? which is to say that we are at war. Right now, we're in a cultural war. Okay, we have equal G's sent to a show. <laughs> okay. And I am caught up. Carry on. So, Saints, oh, I just accidentally closed the tab I wanted to show you guys. I'll pull that back up shortly. So, I'm going to go straight to the end of the first interview where you have the Abba and guy the on the Fresh and Fit podcast. And the reason that I'm going to the end of it to show you guys the end is because, one, I don't find it to be terribly engaging. No disrespect to them. It's just not my flavor of content that I watch or, or would watch. Not to say they're not talented. I'm sure they're plenty talented as they have a million subscribers and success does not happen on accident, generally speaking. But we're going to forward to the end of their um, podcast just to see if there was any conflict and to see if there's any bad feelings or bad taste or negative interaction between the fresh and fit guys and the album preach guys at the end of their first interaction. Okay, before you start, Cassius Pam sent a super chat. He said, Dan, you hotep, hotep and build, you spit in facts, bruh, 100. <laughs> Thank you for the support, Saint. Shout out to Rienzi. He writes, tuition, excited to hear your thoughts. I'm glad, I'm glad. I don't just accept, I, I look at what kind of content people make. I look at what kind of messaging they got. Because I don't want to just jump in and I'm like, oh, oh I yeah, can't course, think around course. these people. Yeah, yeah, so me facts. doing my research on you guys, I'm like, cool, I think I can vibe. I think I can get up here, yeah. have a good conversation. It's a good time. Because you know, me, if I don't like people, you yeah. won't know I'm rich. I can't, I can't hide that. Like, if I think you're a reprehensible person, yeah. you, we're going to have problems. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I wanted to do my, and doing so, I, I stumbled on that podcast. Because it was you guys, everybody. I, mean, I said, oh, that's my face on the thumbnail, nigga, let's go. <laughs> so I click on the video, niggas yeah. wild. And I was like, oh, they think they know all this stuff about me. So. I was laughing a lot about that, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty much the, the, the gist of it. Okay, so this is interesting. Number one, you'll hear the gentleman, Abba, has basically signed off on the nature of the Fresh and Fit content in his statements. He was basically saying, hey, I did my research on you guys, and you guys kind of checked out at some level. You seemed like you were making things that made sense. You're not a reprehensible person. So it sounds as though he signed off on their content, and he signed off on who they appear to be as men or at least as hosts. So that's number one, which I thought was curious. And then number two, he says niggas and things like that, which this actually comes from the African-American history and experience. And he's definitely not African-American. And what I can tell you that just as much as you would tell a white person not to say nigga, it would make as much sense to tell an East African not to say nigga, because nigga and the etymology or origin of this word comes from the African-American experience. So I find it interesting that he's saying it just because he's wearing an African shirt and it just doesn't seem to like match up with his vibe. So that's just curious to me. Now, one thing I can tell you is he shouldn't be saying it and I shouldn't be saying it. None of us should because it's filthy language. And may we all be forgiven for our errors in using that word. And so I hope that I can limit the use of it. He can limit the use of it. And for sure, don't get in my comments using the word and calling me that because I'm the big homie. Please show respect when you holler this, my name. This is not a super 
chat, we have CEOs of Marquette. Do you ship bags to Europe? So I'm assuming he's talking about the briefcase. Yeah, he's talking about the briefcase backpack, which is a fine piece with Hermes leather handmade. And the batch is being completed at the end of this month. So they're almost finished. And it will be shipped via sea freight to me. So it'll arrive in about 25 to 35 days. So end of this month, uh, production is complete. It'll ship to me. We'll get it in 25 to 35 days and we'll mail it out to you. We've already uh, sold maybe 150 units, something like that. It's about 100 units left. We've done no advertising of it. So you'd probably be wise to get yours early because once they're actually here, the price is going to go up. You can imagine the pre-order price is lower than the price when we got it in hand. But yes, we do ship to Europe, but you will pay an increased shipping price because the shipping price listed is not the price to Europe. Correct. Shipping price listed is domestically for the United States. So you'll pay the accurate figure that'll go direct to your address. You caught up? Yes. All right. Let me catch up real quick. Shout out to Gregory writes, peace to the saints. Truly appreciate it. Peace to the saints. And we don't say peace to the saints just like randomly. It's a warm greeting because we truly believe that you should greet people warmly. Even when you're out in the world, don't ever be in a space and not make your name known, not be friendly to people around you. So that's just the way we live. And that's what we're spreading to the world. You might wonder, like, why do they keep greeting each other? Okay, hippie car guy sent a super chat. He said, why do we call ourselves African-Americans? And that term wasn't coined until 1988. In short, African-American does not refer to a racial group. It refers to an ethnic group. The reason African is used, which is a reference to a racial category, the Negroid category, which is to say that your blood origin is theoretically from Africa, in this case, Western Africa. Well, the two terms together, African, the racial group, and then American, the nationality or national group, it is saying you are Africans of American origin, which is to say that the African-American ethnicity was indeed birthed in America. And in as much as that is the case, the African-American uniquely is the only group of people who can purport to be true Americans because their history was largely cut off. So what preceded them culturally, historically, religiously, linguistically was disconnected, whereas the Europeans came over and maintained their religious culture, their language, etc. And the aboriginals were already here. And then the Latinos were the result of the mixing of the Europeans and Tainos and indigenous peoples. Thank you for that question. Matthew Taylor came in strong with the super chat. He said, peace to the saints. Hope everything is well with you all. Most as well. Thank you for that. You know, truly blessed. We got good problems over here. Life is excellent. Shout out to uh, Dr. Nuosu, who is a familiar name, and he just edited his pledge on Patreon from 129 up to 350 bucks. Real boss stuff right there. You did. We appreciate the the loyalty. And that will be one of the topics that we do address during this conversation because loyalty does have a place, and loyalty is really a major trait of a man. You ought not call yourself a man if you don't have loyalty, which is a value and a principle. Okay, we have Dre Dugan in a super chat. He said, peace to the saints. No one on that panel is from the USA. Fresh is from Barbados, Spit is from Sudan, and Abba is from East Africa of some sorts. There you go. There you go. And it's worth also noting that the African-American has the most emulated culture on the planet Earth, despite being numerically insignificant, AKA a minority, but our ability to project culture is unmatched. So that's why when I travel around the world, people always of course know me to be an American, but I'm a proud African American because our cultural influence is enormous. People wanna be like us, kind of like the Egyptians, even when they were conquered, the conquerors pretended to be the Egyptians. Huh? Yeah, let's talk to history, carrying on. So we're going to watch the end of the first appearance of Abba and Preach on the Fresh and Fit podcast. ...of each other, bro. We're, we all have the same message. The enemy is guys out here that aren't able to understand how life really works. You know or, what I'm saying? Or, or faking it. Yes. yes. Or faking it. So we're out here to help men. It is what it is. You know, you got to be able to put your differences aside and work together mm -hmm. and, and put out great content like this. So... Abba, thank you for coming on the show. And shout Thanks, out to Preach as well. He's Preach. back there still. Uh, <laughs> he's back there, but he's not in. Oh, we had a technical oh. difficulty or something? Okay. So that is the end of the first appearance of Abba and Preach on the Fresh and Fit podcast. And by all accounts, I would say it ended amicably. 
They seem to get along. They seem to come together on the idea that we're, we're both within the same sphere. We make similar content and we're trying to serve men in the society. So it seems like no beef so far. Seems everything's peace and peachy. We good, as they say. Now, here's the second appearance of the ABBA and Preach Act on the Fresh and Fit show. And I will go ahead and click the play button on that one. And by the way, just because I'm super player, you heard me, and I do love being surrounded by women, preferably women who are wealthy, you dig? Preferably women who are intelligent. But regardless, just the way I was brought up, I love being surrounded by women. So I enjoy seeing a scene like this because it's just what's in my blood. You heard me? So that's a beautiful thing to me, just on a visual level. So shout out to Fresh and Fit for arranging that. They got the whole train. Choo-choo! The whole train then pulled up. Shout out. Now let's go ahead and get some analysis. And you know I'm going to talk my talk. Yes, sir. Let me maximize this for the Saints. Saying yes earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. No. No. So, so no. Kurt, just peep something super fascinating. You gave options for short term, long term. Short term, they're like, got to be attractive, got to fuck right. Long term, they went into all this esoteric stuff about <laughs> personality, character. I'm like, cool, would you marry an ugly guy? No. So if it comes down to the fact that the same thing they're looking for short term, you find out even in long term partners, if they don't get it, they're not going to be down. So I just thought that was interesting that you guys all made a sign. Let me acknowledge that Abba is an insightful individual. He listened to these imbeciles, i.e. the females that were on the show. He listened to these bimbos babble. You like that alliteration? The bimbos babbled, and then he was able to synthesize and summarize their point, which is like, hey, you dumb broad, you claim that you want all these meaningful things in the long term, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to the physicality. And why does it come down to the physicality? Because you have no brains. So of course, the external things, i.e. the cosmetic, the surface is what impresses you. And these are the kind of dim-witted females who are mesmerized by chains, fast cars, and all of these instruments that men use to ensnare these goofy chicks. Yeah. So example, when you see a guy like me in a fast car, no part of it is because I like fast cars. The other part is because these dumb bras like fast cars. But the thing about a P is he understands that these are tools and never does a P get confused and actually invest his true emotions into these objects. He understands that these are objects to be used as tools. A foolish man, a dimwitted man, thinks that these objects actually have value. There is no value in a Ferrari. There is no value in this necklace. There is only value in human connection. There is only value in joy, in happiness, because there are a lot of people who have the Ferraris and they got the jewelry and the money and they end up like Robin Williams committing suicide because they're not happy. They don't have the true value. Hey, Jay Barrio, Barrio said, thanks for chat. He said, have you heard about a resurfacing black American language called Tutneys that a lot of black Americans are relearning? If so, do you have any thoughts on it? I think it's foolish and it doesn't pay. Go for what gets, pay, uh, gets you paid. African-Americans, their number one issue is financial. Most of the things that ail them root from finances and broken families. The African-American community is in disrepair and it's not being led. And the fake leaders, which are mostly white females, either through direct leadership or through proxies, proxies like Barack Obama or Jesse Jackson or whoever they want to look to, their favorite rapper, but all of these persons, Barack Obama, Jesse Jackson, your favorite rapper, they're spewing out the thinking and ideology of liberal white women. Even the Black Lives Matter movement is actually not about black people. It's about the Skittle people, because if you read their mission statement, in their mission statement, it says they want to dismantle patriarchy, which is male leadership. And the black family, more than any other family, needs male leadership. All the data indicates that in the absence of male leadership, kids are going to underperform in school and have higher likelihoods toward criminality and therefore incarceration. 
fantastic. Our new emperor did email about setting up a consultation, which is part of the emperor membership. Absolutely. And I've just been informed that uh, Bridget's going to respond to your email to get you set up for your consultation. And for those who don't know, um, we do 40 minute consultations for our emperor level members. And that can be a consultation about business, about relationships, whatever you like. And we have a lot of successful businesses that have come out of this work. Uh, shout out to all the saints. We're really hustling. Get it. Okay, we have Spencer Sims sent a super chat. He said, Peace, big bro. I'm the artist that sent through that record and the beat for you to rap on. Hope to produce some beats for you when you need them. Hashtag is them. Well, I, I can't say I ever need beats because I'm a fake rapper. I'm a SoundCloud rapper, although I do have more bars than J. Cole and everyone else you can name. Just throwing that out there. And I kicks him off the top of the head. Yiddy. Shout out to Rienzi for coming through on Cash App. Shout out to Kareem Glows. He writes, Peace to the Saint. We have Dwayne Perry in the super chat. He said, great content. Been watching for about a year now. I'll keep it going, big homie. And shout out to the beautiful lady reading the chats. <laughs> shout out to you, my Thank dear. You. All right, carrying on. So what I just did was we, we played a little bit from this Fresh and Fit uh, part two podcast, which to me would suggest that Abba and Preach have a great relationship with Fresh and Fit when you see them twice. Because I would... I would consider myself to have a, a good working relationship with Fresh and Fit, but I haven't even shown back up. Now, mind you, it would be in my benefit to show back up because remember, when I went on Fresh and Fit, I did them a favor. But I haven't even turned back around and said, hey, Fresh and Fit, you guys had 17,000. When I pulled up, I was a part of your come up. Can I come back on and get some of these subs that you guys got? I haven't done that. I haven't asked them for a damn thing. You heard me? So it would be in my benefit to show back up, but I haven't even done that. So I can assume these guys got to have some level of rapport and positive relations for them to show back up two times in a relatively, I would think, short period. So now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the end right after this. Mitchell McCauley, he says, from what I heard, OnlyFans is going to be banning nudity on their platform. Peace to the assassin. I hope you got your roles back. Thanks for the ism. Saint. Ooh, we went in uh, to the place. I, I gave him 10,000 cash. And long story short, bro, that was not, the, that was the third payment. Third, yeah. That was the third payment. So I gave him 10,000 cash. That was my third payment. And um, long story short, I drove it off and had to drive it right back and drop it back off. Magically, the guy who had my money left. So we're going to have to deal with these people. I'm probably going to set up a war room to show you guys how I get down when, when there's a problem like this. So the Rolls Royce is still with these guys. Um, but, you know, we got something crazy to, to whip. You heard me? We still driving six-figure whips out here. Yiddy. Shout out to the Saints who came through via Cash App. He writes, appreciation for giving black men an alternative message. That's truly a pleasure, Saint. And really, this should be the only message because I cannot identify one black man who is saying anything worth hearing. And that includes any of these hotep dirtbag phonies that you can name. Half of them, they want to build something, but they never finish building it. The other half of them want to tell you how you were, your ancestors are the Egyptians. You have a great history. Yeah, but what about today? What are you teaching people to do presently other than complain? Huh? And then the political leaders who appear to be black, like Barack Obama, focus all his energy on helping the Skittle people, but did nothing for those who got him elected. I'm the only black leader that exists today, period. If you could name one that's done anything, let me know. Jay Anthony, one for four, sent a super chat. He said they both they shot both shows in one day. The midnight ah. show had all the ladies. Ah, dope. Okay, that's clever too. That's smart content. That's a beautiful thing. And I appreciate that information because accuracy is good. This podcast here, I forwarded to the end. And now I'm about to play the end so we can see if there was any conflict or ill will that seemed to be apparent at the end of this podcast. Real quick, AR sent a super chat. He said, just received the black box, flipped to a random page before reading and read two sentences and knew it was already a banger. He sent some fire emojis and said, can't wait to read it. I truly appreciate that. And the black box was not a book rushed out like a lot of the garbage that these all. these uh, YouTubers released to you. And remember that the difference between them is that they were no one before YouTube. That's why I always say I'm the big homie because I have more of everything than all these guys. And I had more of all these things before I started YouTube. You dig? And 
you're talking to a guy who actually has multiple degrees from advanced universities, who's done business around the world at the high level, government level, big contracts, done business with Fortune 500, Fortune 100. So when I put out a work, it's not like I saw one person's I'm not going to name any names, but there's one individual who put out a book that you guys are buying on Amazon. And the book is like 20 pages. Oh, Swear. Yeah, we ain't going to name it. Looks it looks like a restaurant menu. Yeah, it looks like a restaurant. Oh, Bridget said they book look like a restaurant menu. Yeah. And uh, here's a, a dirt bag. He writes, this guy is feeling himself. Absolutely. And let me direct you to a great video that I just recently made. It's called When to Be Humble and When to Be Arrogant. And I can assure you that I'm happy feeling myself because unlike you sucker, and I could tell that you didn't come from anywhere and you didn't make it anywhere because people like me who come from the mud, we love to see people get up out of the mud because it's an unpleasant place to be. You did. And so when you've come as far as I've come in life, you tend to celebrate. Why is that? Because when you come from the dirt and your mom is on crack cocaine, and in prison and your father's in prison for selling crack cocaine and you're raised by your grandmother who has dementia and you hustle your way up out of that situation into Berkeley and then into Johns Hopkins for grad school. And then you invent a technology off some Benjamin Franklin stuff. You heard me? And you get recognized around the world. In fact, you become a global good fun fellow. Yeah, you're going to feel yourself. Why? Because most don't make it. Why? Because my best friend is dead right now. Why? Because half my homies in the pen right now. That's why, sucker. Okay, we have PJ. He sent a super chat. He said, you forgot about King Simp Derek Jackson selling women crack, profiting off their destruction. Oh, did I? I wanted to block that sucker, but the, the super chat, the chats are moving so damn fast. It hurts oh, my heart. Them. Yeah, find that sucker and block. Get him the fuck out of here. He put a and, question mark. And, and by the way, if you ever see me in real life, I encourage you guys to hate on your boy in real life. You can be like, man, that bruh, you be like, that man is everything he said he was. So I encourage you to hate on me in real life. And if you read my book, you know what I'm really about. And I use real names in my book. So if you ever want to DM somebody and say, did he really do that? They'd be like, yeah, yeah, he did that. And remember, there's a lot of things that are not in my book because it wasn't past the statute of limitation. And I had to protect the guilty. Huh. Oh, you caught him? You caught him? Beautiful thing. That's efficiency. Get you a good woman. You heard me? It's going to help you prosper. Yes, indeed. You caught up? We're caught up. Fantastic. Shout out to Kareem Glows. He writes Peace of the Saints. Quincy writes Appreciation. Okay, we, we already saw those. That's old news right there. Okay. So we've just seen the end of the second Fresh and Fit uh, podcast hosting I've been preaching. So far, all seems peaceful. All seemed well. So now let's look at what I understand to be the first video when the the problem started. You did. So this is the juicy one. This is the juicy one. We have Shua Edgerton sent his third super chat. This is one of my favorite questions. He said, top five books to start reading to find myself. Mm. He said, helping me spiritually and mentally, besides your book, because I've already read that. Great Mm. book, brother. Thank Um, you. Your book's number one, though. My book is number one. It is. I wrote it to be the best book that you can read because, say, if you read Dostoyevsky, some of these classic works in literature, at the end of one of the chapters, you might not have even understood what you read or you might not have figured out what the moral of the story is. At the end of my chapter, I give a black box, which is saying, hey, if you didn't get it, this is what you should learn. And then I ask you questions about your life and how you're living. It's an autobiography that somehow is not about me. It's encouraging you to reflect on yourself and your present state. The challenge in the society is that no one wants to reflect and acknowledge what's real. It's a shameless society. No one wants to feel shame. They say there's fat shaming. Isn't fat a shameful thing? Slut shaming. You telling me you can hop from like a pogo stick? You just hopping on them and that's not shameful? We're in a society where everyone wants to pretend as though everything's okay that they do. When in actual fact, you will never advance unless you acknowledge you have some deficits and you make improvements. Do you not think that me growing up in the ghetto, I didn't have to learn a lot of things to figure out how to go from being in poverty to interacting with people around the world? Huh? You could watch a video of me in China 
being hosted and toured by the Chinese government with cameras and photographers following me? You think I automatically knew how to interact at that level? No, I had to learn that. And there were things I had to unlearn from my shabby upbringing. Okay, five books. Define self spiritually and mentally. I was wilding, huh? I appreciate you bringing me back. Five books. Number one, you will never find yourself in a book. Let me tell you that straight away. My book is always telling you to get out in the world and do things. I have a chapter in my book that you should reread. It is entitled, Experience Will Reveal Your Purpose. The chapter is entitled, Experience Will Reveal Your Purpose. Not reading. That's not experience. Experience is doing. So I encourage you to reread my book and use the knowledge. Don't learn it, but use it. Huh? That's number one. Number two, in terms of other people's books, The Richest Man in Babylon. Great work. The Prince by Machiavelli. It'll teach you how to deal with people. Uh, number four, I guess we'd be on, is The Autobiography of Malcolm X. Great work. And if you're African-American, I'd recommend by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Message to the Black Man. Phenomenal, classic work. And beyond that, I think those are some good some good books to start with. Okay, Heartbroken Father sent a super chat. He said, F and F should have took a day or two to sleep on what AAP loosed into the webosphere about them. Not respond in real time. Big mistake. That's a good point because... When you act on emotions, you're not using your intelligence most of the time. Your intelligence is crippled. In fact, the science indicates that when the human male is angry, our memory starts to fail. You ever got angry and you're trying to say something or remember something while you're arguing with your girlfriend and you can't remember? It's because you're mad. Your brain is not functioning at peak. So the saying is correct in that we should always get back to a state of equanimity before we begin to speak. And if you follow the ism, I always tell you, think before you speak. And I even give you a few clues on how to best do it, which is number one, you should ask yourself, should this thought become a word, an action, or nothing? A word meaning my language will have some good effect or an action, meaning there's nothing to say. Let's get after it or nothing, meaning that was a negative thought. I should just shut up. And sometimes, in fact, most times, you should just shut up. So you're right about that. Okay, we have uh, Yakachi Yukandu. Mm -hmm. He said he came in strong with Super Chat. He said, appreciate your balanced perspective on a variety of topics. Peace. Absolutely. I'm just trying to stand on the side of truth because it's lost in today's society. We have Tommy Bali. He said tuition. He said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Gregory also said peace to the saints via PayPal. We have Donovan Aikens. He said a wise man speaks because he has something to say. A mm. foolish man speaks because it's something... He has to say something. Oh, no. True story. Plato. Plato. Sorry. Yes, indeed. We have high fives in the super chat. He said, I'm not a saint, but I respect everything you do. And I've read your book and the richest man of Babylon on your recommendation. I've learned a lot. And it said Jorge and Sarah. Oh, so it's both of them. That's a beautiful yeah. thing because we talk so much about values and family is the core of everything. And so I'm so happy to hear man and woman together. Uh, Jorge and his lady, we appreciate the support. And though you might not be one of the saints, we know that the way we live and, and the example we show is going to impact people the way you have been impacted. And so we appreciate that. We thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Peace to him. Saramondo STI. I'm sure, I think he's the one. Sorrow's my youngin, yeah. man. I've been, I love hearing from Sorrow. Shout out to the youngin, man. I'm, I'm, this is a good looking young man. Good looking, got a mouthpiece on him. I'm, I'm proud of Sorrow. It's good to, hear from you, Sorrow. And um, by the way, if you do need those uh, contacts, they did hit my line. So I'd have to go back through, but I can get those manufacturers to you if you need them. He, you have to email me. He said a super chat though. He said, you talk a lot about be the greatest part of who you truly are. How do I even find out what the greatest part of who I am is? I reference you back to that chapter. And I don't know if you're a reader, if, if you don't like to read books, we now have the audio book, which is available. And the chapter is entitled Experience Will Reveal Your Purpose. And I want to inform you that you're a young man, Sorrow. And in this society, the old heads fail to share the wisdom of age, which is to say that you might not know what you're supposed to be until you're 30 years old. It might take some time, but surely you should be setting goals 
as you progress down your path. And I want you to know that the wrong goal will get you to the right place. Having no goal is unacceptable. But when you do have a goal and you pursue that goal, as you work through it, make connections, meet people, have experience, you'll learn about where you're really meant to be. I promise you. Okay, we have High Card Ace in Super Chat. He said, haven't caught a live in months. Happy to see you all. What are your thoughts on NYC Mayor mandating a shot just to work out in gyms? Peace to the assassin. Number one, for the folks who haven't caught a live in a long time, make sure that you click the bell so you get the notifications because I don't pre-schedule my lives because my life is too good to schedule a live to, I don't want to take a break from the fun. You heard me? I got time today though. I think that we must vote for our, with our feet and we must exercise our individual freedom as human beings. And if they want to mandate a shot to go into a gym, then you need not work out in that gym or a gym if you're in the state of New York. For example, today, me and a group of saints came together and we had a tremendous workout, I promise you, and there was no gym needed. And it was good work, both on the muscular side as well as the cardio endurance. So it's not necessary. So I encourage you to link up with some of the saints in your locality and get some work in. And a part of our work is to grow our influence so we don't have to put up with things like this, because at the end of the day, nobody wants to be bossed around. You'd rather be the boss and you want to be able to live according to your decisions and your values. And so we must organize against this kind of domination that we don't consent to. We have Zazu, and it looks like the name is Leroy. He said, check PayPal. While you're looking for that, we have Austin W. sent a super chat. He said, how do you feel about the Bible? The Book of Palms literally mirrors a lot of principles you mentioned, such as financial security, male leadership, and dealing with nefarious people. Okay, so is this a different guy than the PayPal guy? Yeah. Okay. So my answer to the Bible is that I have excellent reading comprehension and the Bible is not a very clear work. In some places is written in allegory, written in metaphor, parables, all these fairly advanced forms of language. You know, for that, it's not the best guide for mankind at large, if we're being honest. However, there are some stories there that are undoubtedly true. Um, at least not in a literal sense, but at least they point out things you should know about human nature, such as the Adam and Eve story or the Cain and Abel story are very insightful. And so I try to appreciate it for that, which is clear enough to apply to life today. And yes, a lot of what I say is biblical might make you want to say church or tabernacle. Yes, indeed. Hey, Jay Barrow sent a super chat. Real quick. Who said check PayPal? His name on YouTube is Zazu, Z-I-Z-O-U, and it looks like his name's actually Leroy, so I'm not sure. Ah, I see his right here. He came in under the threshold, so some of the saints might be wondering, you know, why did Marquette not acknowledge me? Um, if we go under $5, we find that, you know, we'll be answering questions forever. And so $5 or more is where we answer the questions, just so that everyone has an opportunity to speak and say what's truly important to them. Because some people will send a dollar to ask something that's relatively petty. And so we try to up the, the floor just so that you know people are saying things that are more relevant. Okay, Jay Barber said, Kay Samuels did a bold live recently saying Black men should pay high-end escorts to save time and be more productive. Do you have a thought on that? I do have a thought on that. And I can tell you that if you look at his background and my background, which is worth always analyzing the speaker, you see, because truth is one thing, but where someone gets their truth from is something to consider, which is to say people get their truth from education. People get their truth from experience. And I don't find that he has a significant amount of education. He does not have a significant amount of experience being a high value male. And because of that lack of experience, when he gives you advice, it's sophomoric, which is to say that, you know, there's a pretend that to pre be more productive, you can take a shortcut by paying whores. Well, no one, number one, I work more than anyone you know, and I always have. And I've worked on complex things. Like I invented a software technology, run a software company with offices in St. Louis, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, Chicago, Illinois, um, Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Seoul, South Korea. Actually, it wasn't in Seoul. It was in um, where's my Korean office. And damn, it's skipping my mind right now. But the point is, I've worked across so many time zones, damn near walking around, working around the clock. And even me, I would not shortcut 
by using a prostitute because that's not a shortcut. When you use a prostitute, you're engaging physically and spiritually with someone who is empty. And I know prostitutes are empty because I've had professional experience with prostitutes, not on the trick side. You dig? These are damaged women who care nothing about you and who would easily lay on their back and give you whatever STD they have because it doesn't hurt them to do so. They would willingly lay on their back with you and then get up while you're still sleeping and steal from you. These are low people. And it doesn't matter whether it's a low end or a high end because there's no such thing as a high end escort because to be a whore is a low state. huh? That's morality. And the reason that I speak up is because I'm the only one with morality that has a platform. Everyone else is regurgitating the same thing Doofus said on his podcast or whatever they call their shows. So let the pimpin tell you. Don't you ever pay one of these hoes. Get carry on, please. Whoo, they done got me saying things I don't want to say today. And hey, by the way, congratulations to KS on his success. But let him not myth- misguide the youth. You dig? Yeah, we won't stand for that. Not here, not today. All right. So uh, shout out to Kareem Glows. Uh, okay, now that's that's old right there. All right. Now, Saints, let us get back to this video where um, basically after appearing on the Fresh and Fit podcast two times, Abba and Preach, it appears as though they took the video clip and now they're kind of critiquing what was said. So let's watch this together in real time and I'll be watching it with you, except I'm watching it from the fir- for the first time. I'm sure you've seen it before. Go ahead and max. Okay, it's maximized. Let's get it. Today's topic, me and Preach were both on this. So there's a discussion surrounding working women, girls mm. who uh, work in the bedroom professionally. And they were saying why they didn't want it to be legalized. And so they asked me and Preach's thoughts. Mm. Well, as a hustler, from a P's perspective, I wouldn't want it to be legalized either. And what I mean by that is back when I used to sell some narcotics that are today legal, back when they were illegal, it was more profitable to sell those things. Now that they're legal, that means that the market is flooded and the consumer has more options, which means that the price that a hustler can charge, someone in the informal economy, is much lower. So from a P's perspective, you definitely want it to remain illegal because you get to name your own price because it's a more scarce resource. That's as a P, you hear me? But as a citizen, surely I would say make it legal because A, cats are going to buy pie no matter what. Apple pie, pumpkin pie, pecan pie, any kind of pie they got, men are going to pay for it. So there's no sense in having laws that we're not going to enforce. It has been written that If you have no enforcement, you have no law. So the United States government actually weakens its legitimacy when you outlaw something but allow it to go on, thereby giving tacit approval. And if you lived in any major city, and I've lived in many major cities as well as meaningless cities, shout out to Springfield, Missouri, um, it's going on. Damn near out in the open sometimes. And let us be real. Is a strip strip club not a whorehouse most of the time? And further, strippers disgust me because they're half-assed. Like, I don't respect their hoeing. Huh? A P don't respect your hoeing if you a stripper. Because you want to get paid for doing nothing. You want something for nothing. And that's vile. That's a part of the low culture emerging in America, which used to be a place of hard workers, industrious people. We're about okay, fantastic. I thought you were raising a hand. Were you no. just raising a hand to testify? Not raised. You're raising a hand to say he talking that talk? People are talking about the boxing match. Oh, right. Yeah. And just side note, we haven't gotten to the boxing match part yet, but I did put the link for the hand wraps. And by the way, no one on the YouTube game should really be talking about boxing unless it's Logan Paul because his hands are decent. No, excuse me, Jake Paul. Jake Paul's hands are decent. Logan Paul has no hands. The man cannot box. But these are actually the best hand wraps 
in the whole world. Literally, these are the longest hand wraps, which provide for the greatest amount of protection, which is why I invented them because I really throw hands and I need protection. As you can see, you know, my knuckles are scarred up from laying people on their backs. Around, yeah. These do have some special Velcro, you dig? Um, so we're going to get to that eventually. And this is what happened. Picture this though, right? We're dealing with these girls behind the scenes in person, right? How they look at these guys that are paying is different from what, what it's telling you in person because they look at you as, okay, he's paying a need that I have, but I don't respect him. And for me, I don't want a bitch's pussy. I want to. Okay, so there is truth to what Fresh just said, which is the idea that a prostitute does not respect a trick. A prostitute looks at a trick in the same way that she looks at a cockroach as something that has no value is almost a pesterance and can easily be found, meaning they're everywhere. I think it's been said that cockroaches would survive a nuclear catastrophe, which is to say they value you so little because a woman could walk down this boulevard or any boulevard in the right outfit. She could be fat, tall, small, and somebody going to pull over and tell her to get in and they're going to pay what she's asking. Huh? But first, we have Damari Adams that those hand wraps are nice, bought some, and they're the only ones I use. Mm -hmm. Shout out. CG Cap. He says the hand wraps are top-notch. use them every day. That's beautiful. And as I said, they're the most important thing to us is customer service. You cannot have good customer service unless you have good product. And the dope is good here. You dig. Okay, we have Tommy Bali. He sent a second super chat. He said, what's your thought on OnlyFans banning sexually explicit content from October? Look, I need to, I didn't mention it because I want to create a, a graphic because I don't want anyone to try to steal what we're doing here. But the Sassin has declared a holiday. October 1st is the international holiday for men's. Cause we for men, cause we making these hoes broke again. You heard me? And a P don't like a chick to have any money. We don't like them to have a damn penny. So it's a goddamn holiday. I have announced it today. October first is a holiday. We got to give out some free stuff on October first. Please remind me. We have Q Dog twenty two sent a super chat. He said, "I just finished your book. Good mm. read. Shout out to the Saints." He finished the black box. He says it's that fire and check out the reviews on Amazon. We five star out here and we over, we got hundreds of reviews. We, you can't make this stuff up. We have Haas comps in the super chat. He said, peace Marquette. Why can't you and sinful the P come together? I watch both of you guys and appreciate your work, but there seems to be some animosity. I don't even know who that is. Haas, I don't know who it is either. Um, Haas com, thank you for being consistent. And I will tell you very briefly the individual that you mentioned, whose name I won't repeat, I've never mentioned him ever in any of my content. And I hope no one even types his name out because we don't want to give him any shine. But he brought my name up out of nowhere and he was defending. In fact, you know what? Let's leave all that in the streets. Let's leave all that in the streets. I never heard of any of these people. But I tell you what, if they heard of me, I'm in Las Vegas all the time, my favorite restaurants in the wind. You ever want to find me? I'm always there, and I'm always ready to go Rambo. That's true. I've been. Around. She said that's true. <laughs> She's seen it. Yeah. Next. I, I'm high up. Fantastic. But let me just say, don't bring up any of these people I never heard up again because we're just gonna leave that offline. You heard me? Yeah. Because some people really are what they say they are. Yeah. Anyways, carrying on. Let's get back to this uh, this uh, Aben preach. So, respect him. And for me, I don't want a bitch's pussy. I want her soul. Ah, 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 you ah. ain't kidding. Whoa. He, well, fresh, 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 fresh. Bruh. Only the P, only the pimping is getting her soul, baby. Don't make that. You didn't went too damn far, and I had to make the same face that Preach made when you said that, because that, that was wild. Was that? Was that was my favorite face he made. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, you should have some goals. He got goals in life. That's a beautiful thing. But if you ain't the pimp and you ain't getting their soul, bro. Okay, but I like the intention. Yes. We have Saint Foundation in the super chat. He said, "Been out the way, but just checking in on you, Saint. Hope all is well. Any mm. updates on the backpacks?" Absolutely. Backpacks are finishing production at the end of this month, which we are, it's the 20th. So in the next 10 days, production will be complete. They'll be shipped via sea freight. So they'll arrive in about 25 to 35 days to me and they'll be shipped out same day. Okay. All right.
Fantastic. So um, I can I can identify with Preach here where he makes that face of like, nigga, you crazy. Oh, I didn't use the N-word. Ah! But I can feel you, Preach. Carry on. Ain't nobody soul. The f*** you think you are, Ghostbusters? This man said her soul. <laughs> Look at your face right now. You're looking at the camera like, what is he talking about? I don't know where the whole... Okay, so let me give you guys a little bit of perspective now. And he, here's where things get a little bit curious to me. If you went on Fresh and Fit's show and appeared on two different episodes, at least to the public, it appears that you guys are amicable. Now you're doing a review of your content when you were on their show, which is fair enough. You know, people want to produce content. That's understandable. This is at some level your job. But now it appears as though you're laughing at, in this case, Fresh in particular, and you're poking fun at him. Now, whether what he said was foolish, true or not, it just doesn't seem to be a, an upright thing to do to someone that you respect or have good relations with. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because if I heard something on the Fresh and Fit podcast and then I thought, ah, that's whack, I wouldn't make a video about that being whack because there's no real utility for me to speak up on them. It's not going to make me a dollar. It's not going to improve my relations with them. And it's going to show me to be a non-loyal person and loyalty I value highly. So unless they're spreading corruption among the youth, they're saying things that are wildly inaccurate or evil. I'll probably just let it go because we've worked together. We've done business together. So that's like that kind of I find that a bit distasteful as a man. And if you guys watch my um, I don't I don't want to say show, but my my discussion when I invited uh, Mr. Lucario onto the, sh the platform and we had a conversation. There's a piece of information I did not know about him that came out during that conversation. And I jokingly said to Mr. Lucario, I was like, I was like, bro, that's crazy. You mind if I make, we chop up and edit a little piece of footage about that. And then we make a sensational title about what we just found out about you. He was like, don't, yeah, go ahead. Which was very gracious and manly of him to say, man, that's a small thing. Go ahead, make a buck off of it. That was gangster. I got to respect that. But I didn't have it in my heart to take a clip and portray someone I respect and have good relations with in a bad light. I didn't have that in my heart to do that. Even though it would get views, I was like, I can't get down like that. There's no amount of money that can make me want to get down like that. It's low to me. Okay, we have Donovan Akins and his second super chat. He said, never trick, viscosity is free. Women today, especially in America, who sex is a commodity, often comparing it to gold at times. Well, the vagina damn sure ain't worth what gold is worth. Let let that be known. And then we have one nard sent tuition. Shout out to one nard. And also, let me tell you something about these whores. Most of them are trying to operate efficiently from a business perspective. So they're trying to hump you as quickly as possible and move on to the next trick. So you're not even getting quality cut when you deal with them. That's why me personally... I don't even like to sleep with half the women who throw it at me. You heard me? And they throwing it at me like Dale Nomo left and right. They trying to get me to Mark McGuire it out the stadium. And I got to turn it down like my collar. You heard me? Because I don't want to lay with a woman who has no soul. And then secondly, when you're dealing with a woman who's been around the block so many times, you can't enjoy it. You got to roll back the Jimmy hat to the serial numbers and pray to God that you don't catch anything. You can't really enjoy it like you should. So it's really a waste of time. And it's something that is more so the inclination of people who don't have their libido under control. And what I teach you gentlemen is that the big head should lead the small head. You heard me? Because a man can lead himself to ruin by many vices and women is surely one of them. And that's why a P has so much knowledge to give. And a P is really the only one who understands women anyways. So if you ask me, no one should really be talking about women. And there was a character that was mentioned previously. And I say he's a character because he's an actor. And if you know who I'm talking about, this guy, if you look on YouTube, you can find a video of him being arrested for abusing women. And that's not the pimping. You heard me? You pimp from the mouthpiece, from the lip, not from the hip. Come on now. Jeremiah Haynes in a super chat. He said the only fans creators never thought they were actually be the Simpsons for the platform Inception LOL. Thank you for sharing that. So 
we gave my perspective on kind of like the nature of this video and how I find it strange as like you were rocking with them and now that you're critiquing them, almost poking fun at them. And to give you a little bit of context on how I know is best to get down and what will keep you safe is anytime you've ever heard me make a video about another creator and I was the first person to make that video, you can bet your life that every single time I reached out to them at, in advance. So for example, with this video, I reached out to Fresh and Fit. I said, hey, by the way, people are almost annoying me with DMs about you characters. And I'm even getting comments on my videos that are unrelated that are saying, oh, Fresh and Fit can learn from this, Fresh and Fit. And so it's clearly enough of an issue that we need informed perspective. And the truth is there's nobody else that can give it perspective as meaningful as mine. Facts. That's why I don't watch YouTube because most people on YouTube aren't saying anything. And I told him, I will be speaking on this. If you would like to represent yourself, you have an open door. He didn't walk through the open door. Now, with regards to the uh, Abba and Preach, I have no previous relationship, but still being a man of integrity, I said, let me find their easiest form of contact, which is Instagram. I DM'd their Instagram and I said, gentlemen, I don't know you. I have observed this situation. It's been brought to my attention. I'm going to speak on it. It involves your name. I want to let you know that I'm going to speak on it. I'm going to be unbiased. And I invite you to represent yourself if you would like to. Gentlemen said, hey, speak your truth. Say no more. And I can respect the response. And it seemed like a very authentic way of dealing with things. So they both could have been here if they wanted to be here. And I provide everyone that opportunity before I speak their name. Why? Because where I'm from, when you speak up on people's names, that could get you killed. For real, for real. And so I, I still carry on with those values. Because I also don't want people speaking up on my name. Huh? So I give the respect that I expect. And when people do speak up on my name, I always reach out in private first. Just to let them know, like, hey, bro, I'm really out here. So, like, what you said is in the past. Now that I've presented myself to you, don't do it again. And if you do do it again, then... I'm never going to speak about you. And if I don't speak about you, that's when things get ugly. Eh? Now, talk to me. We're caught up. Fantastic. Now, let's let's hear more of what they have to say. Whole souls comment came I was from. like, this, uh, you want a soul? That's corny. That's super corny. But anyways, I want to I, I respect. So <laughs> yeah. I, I know what you're saying, Same. Like, Same. I don't Same. get it. Okay. So this is not a question of did he say something corny or did he not say something corny? That's not the question here. The question is, if you rock with somebody, do you then put them out on to the public and call them corny? Even if they are. Say Fresh is extremely corny. Do you call them corny? How does that make you look as the speaker of an insult when you've not been insulted by that person, right? Now, let it be known. I have ideological differences with Fresh and Fit. I have... My game and their game is radically different. And if you ask me, I'm the only person who has good game. I'm not saying people don't say things that are true. But as far as game go, I think I'm the only one that's really kicking game. All the same, you don't hear me disrespect them out of the blue, especially having work with them. And so as arrogant and as cocky as I am, you don't hear me doing that. And here's the difference. I'm with the shits. If I said I would box any one of these dudes, yeah, no problem. If I said I would catch them, I would. And if they caught up with me, I'd be the same arrogant asshole when they see me. Yeah. I'm grimier than all of these guys. And that being the case, I still don't speak up on people like that. You see what I'm saying? And the reason I wanted to address this is because of this. You have the whole internet going against Fresh and Fit. Maybe it's rightfully so. Who knows? I haven't got through the videos yet. We still going through videos. But what we don't have is a reasonable analysis of the root of things. And when you're dealing with somebody who has 1.4 million fans, fans are goofy. The word fan is the root word of fanatical or fanatic meaning you're like zealous, you're not thinking, you're emotionally attached. And that's why you're not getting a lot of reason. huh? So I'm not dealing with, are they saying things that are true? I'm dealing with, are you showing the appropriate respect to people you should consider peers? 
That's what I'm dealing with. And I'm still not saying anybody's a dirt bag. I'm not saying Abba and Preacher dirt bags. I'm not saying Fresh and Fitter dirt bags. Just giving an analysis of the situation. To start with, I said Fresh was dead wrong when he said he's going to take that whole soul. Only the pimping is getting the soul. You heard me? And I agree with Preach when he made that face. It's the same face I made. But when my man um, Abba said, I shouldn't say my man because he's not my man. I want to be accurate. When Abba said, because we're strangers, not not to just we're just strangers. When Abba said, um, "Who is this nerd right here? Do you know a Miri Mike?" No. Okay, don't call me bro. We're not bros. Like by the way, people, don't call me bro. I'm not your bro. Like if you saw me in person and you don't say peace to the saints and I don't know you from Adam, like I wouldn't even shake your hand off of some like like hey 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 like no, we don't get down like that where I'm from. Don't call me bro. Anyways. Um, Abba starts calling him corny, which is an insult. It's an objectively an insult. And I find like, it seems like it comes out of left field. If there's some background people can fill in for me, feel free. The guy behind the scenes, which is, oh, baby, I love whatever. And then she showed me, oh, look, look at all these turkey guys in my dance want to pay me for sex. Uh -huh. Like, I really get that guy behind the scenes. Uh -huh. I'm not the guy that I, I should pay him for. Hey, and you talk about the respect. Let me ask you something. <laughs> all the girls you smashed. Yeah. If I talk to every one of them, you think they all respect you or are going to say good things about you? Yes. Oh, oh shit. You know? Oh. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Uh, Fresh, sir, you're lying. That's okay, though. You're, you're lying. That's okay, though. Huh? Now, look. There's something called a tru truism, which is something that's apparent. So apparent you need not state it. Yeah. The man is lied, but hey, let me ask you guys a question. I'm not asking you if he lied. I'm telling you he lied because I didn't slay a lot of chicks and half of them, uh, they don't have good things to say about the big homie. Why? Because they can't get the pipe no more. They're pipe fiends and they can't get the pipe no more. So they're mad. And the more successful you become as a man and they're not in your life, of course, they don't have good things to say. So fresh. We know that was a lie, but the question is not, was it a lie? That's obvious. We, we don't need to talk about that. Here's a question. When you're speaking live, as I am now, there's no script. There's no teleprompter. You're looking at YouTubers who are everyday people just like you guys who are watching now. They're not exceptionally talented, generally speaking, which is to say that you can hear a Joe Biden, a Donald Trump, a Barack Obama make a mistake in their words while they're speaking live. What I'm saying is that there's no excuse for lying. I'm sure if I brought Fresh on, I would think, I would hope he would fess up to that because that's a clear lie. But the truth is when you're speaking lie, live, you will make errors. And further, when you're entertaining, you're trying to look good. Let's be human here, right? Everybody wants to look good. You want to portray yourself in the best light. He made an error of trying to portray himself in too good a light and of speaking something that's untrue. And if we're being real, we can all admit to having spoken things that are not true. And there's no excuse when you make an error as a man, you should correct it. That shows your integrity. And in my book, you will read about this very situation. I talk about a professor I had at Berkeley. I'll share this quick anecdote. Long story short, there was a white student who asked this black professor, he said, where did you go to school? Where'd you get your PhD? And the black professor says to him, I got it from Harvard. He tried to pronounce Howard, which is a black university. He tried to pronounce it so it sounded like Harvard. And I was sitting there like, nah, bro, you went to Howard. But he wanted to say Harvard because he wanted to feel like he was prestigious and esteemed because at an institution like Berkeley, most of the professors have gone to Harvard, Princeton, Yale, which are far more prestigious than Howard. And what I say in the book is that sometimes we all want to turn our Howards into Harvards, which is to say we want to dress up our reality so that we look better to other people because as human beings, we don't want to feel small. And that's what he did. He, he wanted to look good. And we're all guilty of that. Some of us more than others. But um, yeah, that was that was deep, bro. That was deep. So was he lying? For damn sure. But is it righteous of you to take a video of your business partner and then embarrass them in the public? Nah, that's not righteous. 
And if I was sitting down with Abba and preach, I would look at him as a man and tell him like, you guys are better than that. And I don't even know you. And I know you're better than that because I could feel your spirit. And I could tell that you guys are genuinely authentic people. And maybe you guys were misaligned because you felt like he wasn't being authentic at the level you expect. And that rubbed you the wrong way. And you spoke on that. But you don't want to drag anybody through the dirt unnecessarily. So that's that would be my words to Abba and Preach. And that would be me telling them it's the big homie. Yeah. We have Anthony TV said a super chat. He said, keep picking game family. Peace to the saints. Peace to the Saints. We have Suo 1987 sent a super chat. He said the beef started when Myron called Abba blue pill on another podcast, then stuttered when Abba asked him about it in real life in the first interview. No kidding. That's what the super chat says. Well, let me let you guys know how non-internet I am. I don't even know what blue pill is. Like if somebody called me blue pill, I'd be like, which what? What is that? Like, what is this internet stuff? Like, knock it off. Um, I don't like, is that an insult? Blue pill? Do people get stabbed in jail for that? Like you be in jail, you call somebody blue pill, you about to get shanked now. The fuck is that? I'm not saying that to, to downgrade the insult. I'm saying that I'm just saying like this internet stuff is crazy. You heard me? And I really only know what this sass in life is like. I only really know what that saint life is like, but this blue pill, red pill, all this goofy stuff, it doesn't mean anything. But I tell you this, if Myron spoke up on Abba preach or anybody else when they weren't around, then they pull up and your story is different. Ah, that's not right. Now, did, did they address that live or who knows? Pull back up on the super chat. And if you got a link, shoot it. Cause I'd be curious. I'll pull that video up. That sounds like something to see. I'm un, unaware of that. So I'm just acknowledging my ignorance. Stamp, he, says in the first video. he says in the first video. Yeah. He said, the beef started when Myron called Abba Blue Pill on another podcast, then stuttered when Abba asked him about it in real life in the first interview. So I guess it was- Oh, so, so they were face to face. Yeah. So let me let you guys know. Number one, beef is not this. Beef is not babbling. That's not beef. Beef is when you don't feel safe at night. Beef is when you want to tell your mama to uh, not stay at the family home. That's beef. Beef is when you got like, uh, beef is when you got- the, these marks right here from getting stabbed. Beef is when you you got, I don't even know if I could show you, but when you got a, a, a mark across your neck because someone tried to slit your throat, that's beef. This is not beef. And more importantly, if, as you said, if Myron spoke up on Preacher Abba, which is not righteous, on another podcast, and then uh, Abba agreed to come on Fresh and Fit and they were face to face, well, shit, if you didn't solve it then, it damn sure ain't beef. If you didn't solve it then, what are we making videos about? Huh? Because there's a few internet nerds that if I saw them face to face, we wouldn't need to make a video after that. Promise you. So that's not beef, right? That's like, that's sweet. Yeah, that's gummy bears. That's not beef. That's gummy bears. Africa Pop Fitness and a super chat. He said, as reference in this video, keep watching. Sir, yes, sir. Oh, okay. Okay, you know the best part? The live stream chat during that period, they were going I, crazy. I, I, I know. Yeah, they were just going, cap, that's a lie. The people have spoken. I'm sorry, okay? I don't care who it is. I don't care what. If you're out there and you've been with enough people, eventually you're going to have people who are talking shit about you behind your back. Oh, it's dangerous. Even if it's not true, it doesn't matter. You think all your exes are saying wonderful things about you? You think everybody you went on a date with is saying wonderful things about you? No. Rough. You guys run a podcast where you're talking about ladies all the time. Controversial opinions. There's no way the women that you've been with all. This is um, this is accurate. Now I find that Abba seems to be an intelligent, intelligent gentleman, and he speaks accurately. And what I really like about these two guys is these guys look soulful. You know, they they look like real dudes. In as much as there's no, nothing plastic about them, and I appreciate that. Now, granted, um, if Abba wanted to, you know, get get a lineup. And I say this as a cat with no hair. You hear me? If I had a full head of hair like that, man, I'd be I'd be in the barbershop 24-7 like Dre, Snoop, and Devin. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to him. Um, if I was him, I'd get a lineup. But I say that to say he comfortable without a lineup. You know, he's just being himself. And that I like. Like, he's not, you know, he's like, look, I like to keep it scruffy. And you hear me? Do you? And then his partner got the Yosemite Sam joint. Did Yosemite Sam used to have a rag tied around his neck? 
like he was a Damu or something. Yeah, so he got the rag tied around his neck. I think that's his trademark. Cool, that's dope. And I like that. These guys are being themselves. And that's the number one thing we promote, which is first and foremost, be yourself. Because trying to be someone else will get you into trouble. It might get you exposed, for example. And what I can assure you guys of is you'll never see a video of the same center exposed. I mean, I'd love to watch that video, but it'll never be possible because I haven't been out here faking. You know what I'm saying? Because being me, who I really am, is the easiest person. You might see a video like the same the center got jumped by 10 dirt bags. Yeah, you might see that video, but you never see one of me exposed. That would be ludicrous. Okay, we have little Jimmy. Sunny Super Lil Jimmy. Lil Jimmy, boy. He said, thoughts on asking the girl you really like to be your girlfriend versus just keeping interest until she indicates that she wants to make herself. Let her ask friend. that, little Jimmy. Because Lil Jimmy, check this out. If the female is the one that's more inclined to emotionalism, why would you ask her to be your girlfriend? You're you're not keeping your poker face on. You're showing her all your cards and you're looking desperate. You're dealing with a human being that is led primarily by love and emotions. So why are you taking this leap to say, lock me in? I want your mind. Like, no, that is not showing abundance. Which you, and by the way, I'm not about pretending, I'm about actually having abundance. You heard me? That's a difference. Most people say, be on your purpose. Well, what does that mean, right? So if you really have abundance, you wouldn't be so stuck on this chick because you might forget about her now and then. I got more hoes and clothes, and half the time, you know, you might forget about that one shirt because it's in the dryer or it's in the dirty clothes hamper. You heard me? And that's how you want to move. So keep on finessing her. Keep on filleting that mignon and let her come to you and say, Lil Jimmy, I would like you to be my man. And then you tell her, act like you're going to think about it. And then go ahead and give her the thumbs up. Okay, we have Dre Dugans in the super chat. He said, there may be some losses coming from multiple women against Myron. Check at Satan Nisha. Twitter, she is coming for him heavy with receipts. Anna Prince Fitness on YouTube has a video with receipts too. That's what women do. That's what broke people do. They try to steal money from people who got money. Um, and one thing I really want to warn you guys about, if you don't know, because you just might not know, might, might not have reached success yet. I remember during the presidential election, people were saying, people are suing Trump. I'm like, you can't do business without getting sued. It's a part of business. You should expect for people to sue you. Now, granted, I think in his case, it's due to some of his personal dealings. But, I mean, women are... I mean, the way they did Bill Cosby, the way they do a lot of people, none of this has any relevance to me. I, I, I wish him well. I, I really hope that people nibbling at his pockets, I hope they're not successful. I think you should earn your own money. Okay, we have Shonen Spirit Beast sent a super chat. He said, peace, it appears that AMP's opinions of F and F change after the podcast. In AMP's response, it seemed they had researched them more and found some info on F and F that made him reevaluate things. Yes, it would. I mean, clearly that's the case. But the question, as I will reiterate to you all, is should this thought become a word, an action or nothing? And I'm not saying that they weren't strategic because undoubtedly they've received a lot more views with this beef. And as a business move, it's a very strategic business move. But from a position of integrity and morality, I would say that it was not a good example so if they were just trying to run up the views, they've been really good at that. If they were running up the, the bread, they've been really good at that. But there's no there's no morality to what they did. They didn't do the right thing mor morally. Okay, Suo 1987 said, hey, Saint, drop a link in the chat. Can't add it in the super chat. Skip to 616. I did already message him saying, please redrop the link because I don't see it in the chat. Is it 616 in the first video or in the current video? So the, he said he dropped the link in the chat, but I can't find a link. Okay. Well, so he'll, he'll, super chat. He said skip to six minutes, 16 seconds. Okay. He'll have to do that again then. Um, okay. We have Dre Dugan sent another super chat. He said, with this new evidence, there may have to be a second video on this. Thanks for the content, Saint. Perhaps. I mean, we'll see if it's worthwhile. We have all of them have positive. Oh, sorry about that. He came in strong with a super chat. He said, respect to you. I agree with your mindset. Everyone needs to be accountable. Absolutely. 
do the things about it. Impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. And this whole idea that have three hours that you put into that date, most people put about five hours minimum, especially if you're sleeping. Minimum, yeah. right? That's time you could have put into work putting out one or two podcasts. You're paying. Everyone pays. We all pay. But, so, but see, that, that experience with me, that's priceless. But see, the moment, bro. <laughs> okay, look. So there's a couple arguments being forwarded. What Abba was just forwarding was the errant idea that everyone pays. Clearly, he ain't never met a P in his life. And that's why I tell you guys, I've seen a P in real life is like seeing Bigfoot. You know, it's, you know, you heard of it, but you've never seen it. It's like a mythical figure. He says everyone's paying. That's not true. I can tell you in my real life, I had a gorgeous blonde chick in Hollywood, California, who used to lay some greenbacks on me whenever I asked. I, she just laid in my mitt. I'm talking about tens of thousands of dollars. So if everyone's paying, why was she paying me? If everyone is paying by definition of the word everyone, that should mean the men and the women. But what you really mean is that men are paying. No, that's not true. And that's why you always have to look at the source of information because people rarely want to be real when it causes them to look into a mirror. So for example, there are some of us who might want a woman who's a perfect 10, but in, a, in terms of like your natural mate, that's not your natural mate because she's a perfect 10, but you got this hunched over posture. You're not very neat. You might not be the best looking guy. You might not have a good rap with the females. You don't got the mouthpiece. You don't have the swag. So you can't get the perfect 10 just off of the strength of who you are. So then you supplement your deficit by using your best move, which is your finances. And through the instrument of money, you're able to capture this female temporarily and enjoy the little piece of pie she'll let you nibble at, let you rent. And then instead of being real with this is your reality, you generalize that to male kind. Well, I can let you know that, number one, I'm not saying that people are wrong for paying for pie. I'm saying that I don't recommend you pay for pie. So I just want to be clear. If y'all want to pay for pie, pay for pie. But I'm saying I do not recommend it. And I can also tell you that I've also had, had them pay me. You heard me? And they weren't paying for the pipe. They're paying for the guidance. You dig? Yeah. Here we have Sir Lancelot in a super chat. He said, funny how they made a video right after called Integrity. Right. I mean, everyone wants to look well upon themselves, right? I'm sure fresh and fit, they want to look well upon themselves, just as Ab and Preach want to look well upon themselves. But I don't find it to be a move of integrity. If someone was speaking up on you and you saw them face to face, deal with your issue then. Get that issue. Or if you have a problem with somebody and you actually have a personal line of communication, don't make a video like verbally bashing them when you could just call them up and like, figure out what's what, or you could just stop dealing with them. So I think it had to have been a business move. And if it was a business move, salute, beautiful move. If it was a business move, beautiful move. And I'm just coming in on the back end, not to disrespect either party, nor to take favor, but just to say to the people who are onlookers that there is no moral party in this. This is a, a messy thing. And I don't see anyone who's a clear, you know, person to follow in this. Okay, Sue in 1987 sent another super chat. He said, drop the link. He said that the video is called Fluke and Fraud Try to Apologize. This is your king. I think you might have that one pulled up. I got that one queued up. Oh, That's that my one third one. Skip to six minutes and 16 seconds. Yeah, I got that one queued up. That's okay. coming up. We have Esmo Kim sending super chat. He said, I hope everyone viewed this beef as entertainment only. View this as an episode of your favorite show. Stay busy on your grind. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And of course, you should view this as entertainment. And if you look at people's core content, you'll notice if they're an entertainer or not. I don't even like using the term show because it lowers what I'm doing to what most people on the YouTube platform are doing. And when you listen to my content, I'm the only person who can talk about the Taliban and the history of the situation and run down geopolitics to you. They can't do that. They don't have the mind, the experience and the knowledge. So I'm lecturing and educating. And then when I talk about your life, whether it's with regards to females, business or otherwise, 
I can give you meaningful strategy. So I'm not here to make you laugh. And I don't have 30 hoes sitting around here just to make the, the optics look good because that's not what I'm doing. But I do want to point out to you guys that Fresh and Fit has, I don't even know how many subscribers, but they have those subscribers because they're a reflection of the average person. So I want to let you guys know when we say, oh, politicians are liars. Yes, they are. But they lie because the masses want to be lied to in as much as the average person would rather have comforting lives than uncomfortable reality. And that's what we're dealing with. And that's why people like me are so valuable, but still undervalued because I don't get super chats like they get super chats. They will have eight bimbos on there saying things that are completely irrelevant. And people will be on their $500 super chat. This is great. So they're giving you what you actually want. So people should say thank you to Fresh and Fit because they're providing what you ask for. huh? They don't have all those subs for no reason. They're shrewd businessmen. So when people accuse them of being like Miami, phony, all that stuff, like one, they, re they are raking in money. So like there's nothing phony about that. They're raking in money. And number two, they are in Miami and they are living according to their local culture. And number three, they're appealing to a market. When I make videos called the importance of Mr. Rogers on American society, no one watches it. Or when I make a video entitled Martin Luther King should have had a plan instead of a dream, no one watches it. That's because of the nature of you, the viewer. So don't blame them for giving you what you want. And Abba and Preacher know better in as much as I just did a summary view of their content. It looks like they do reaction videos to like trending news or trending information. And they're comical. I chuckled a few times, that's for sure. But it's not getting, giving you deep, meaningful content. So let's stop playing games and acting like one of them is so much more superior to the other when they're both entertainment. Eh? So there are a couple people that asked about when you spoke on the Taliban and what happened in the Taliban video. Is that private on Patreon? I think either it's, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean, if it's not on YouTube, it's on Patreon. Okay, I just, let, let me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to act like that. If you see something on YouTube disappear, it's on Patreon for the members. And if you don't see it, shoot me a DM on Patreon. I will send you the link. Okay, we have Coscom sent a super chat. He said the story you told about meeting Suge at 16 seemed like it had serious impact on you, but it wasn't in your book. Why did you leave this out? And are there more stories of this caliber to speak on? So the story of meeting Suge Knight, and by the way, shout out to the big homie Suge Knight. And I just side note, like the world is so fake to where Suge Knight always said he was a gangster. When people do gangster things, though, everyone gets all nervous and like now they don't like Suge Knight. Why? He's a gangster. He did something gangster. That should make sense. When a dog bites you, you should understand it's a canine. That's what those teeth are for. So shout out to the big homie Suge because the people I was around respected Suge and he took care of a lot of people in Southern California. You dig? He's a real one. Yeah. Now. Why did I put the story about Suge in my book? Because number one, I don't want to encourage certain things. This guy said Suge is a bully. Knock it off, bro. Like, have you ever met Suge Knight? Let me, like, number one, have you ever met Suge Knight? You're a fan who's watching TV. I met Suge Knight and have had several experiences with people who know the man personally and have, like, don't be a fan. Be an adult man. Huh? Like, don't talk about things you don't know about. Like, to me, it's, like, annoying. And I apologize for expressing my disgust and discontent, but it's just, like, it's so corny. Like, how are you going to say someone's a bully you never met? Just, like, you don't hear me on here disrespecting Abba and Preach? Because I never met them. And truth be told, if they walked in here right now, I would stand up and greet them like a man and shake their hand. And I would repeat everything I already said, because I mean it. Same thing with Fresh and Fit. I'm not going to disrespect either of them because there's no need. Now, I didn't include stories like that because I don't want to promote uh, gangs. I don't want to promote uh, people being super villains, which Suge Knight definitely is. And there is no moral to that story. There's no major moral. And in my book, I don't have any fat. It's all filet mignon. It's all A5. 
which means everything you read is super relevant. And you can ask yourself, how does this impact me? Most people were not growing up meeting famous figures or meeting powerful crime figures. So I didn't necessarily put everything in there. And also, you know, the book has 50 chapters. We didn't want to go too long. Okay, we have Raleigh Bryant in a super chat. He said, peace to the saints, appreciate the knowledge. Real talk. Carrying on. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Baby, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna tell me you're gonna tell me you're gonna tell me in my face you're gonna tell me in my face that uh, you just uh i don't want to i don't want her pussy i want her soul broadcasted on internet and you gonna tell me that all these girls gonna have respect for you know Bro. some of them watch this you left nigga you left because he lost his nipple the listen there's a lot of reasons <laughs> what, what else would I don't know if he actually left for the whole podcast on that one, but if he did, respect. Because he was saying, look, this is how I really feel. I ain't got no respect. I'm outro. Wow. He's a real one. He's a real one. I can respect that. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with calling a spade a spade. And that seems like that's what he did at that time on the show. Now, being that he's already called the spade a spade during the live session, then that begs the question of why are we rehatching this? Meaning, why are we cracking eggs that are already cracked open? That's curious. So for sure, I'm more so thinking this was a views play and it was a good content play. And that's one thing you got to get used to with the internet is that people do internet type stuff. And this is some internet stuff. What do you do? <laughs> The mama was saying nonsense. Hold on, because me, I'm special. I move so smooth. Yo, believe what you're saying. But go talk to all these ladies. Some of them will not return your messages. Some of them. Oh, okay. So, yeah. He definitely has some disdain. He has some disdain there. I'm going to say there's there's clearly some uh, misalignment. I'm going to go ahead and um, click off of this video. We're going to go on to the next one to keep it moving. And by the way, shout out to the people who really support the work because there's so many folks watching. Not even 1% of the people watching have contributed. So I want to target the ones who have contributed and say, I do appreciate that. I appreciate you appreciating me. And shout out to Calmar, who just became a member at patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center. Trust me, that content will be worth every penny. Shout out to Trey's who comes through via Cash App, sends in 20 bucks in tuition. The gentleman is prosperous. We have Darren, a great decent tuition. He said, peace to the saints. Have a good day. Absolutely. And then we have Javi Ramirez sent a super chat. He said, peace to the saints. Love the running belt and hand wraps. 10 out of 10. Currently preparing for two different 10K runs. What running shorts do you recommend for long 12 mile runs? Thanks for everything. That is beautiful. Um, number one, we appreciate the compliments on our, our product because we go through so many drafts of product. I don't need the money. And so I could take the time. For example, you wouldn't believe it, but it's true. And is my newest duffel bag brief, uh, backpack around here? We were creating a duffel bag backpack. I guess I am creating a duffel bag backpack. This is my eighth version of it because I want it to be perfect before I release it to you. And you guys who follow me, you probably know the ones we started with were black. I got weights and everything in here, but this is the, the latest version of it. Um, and I show you this to say, like, it then went from red to black, from black to blue, straps in the front to straps in the back. The backpack straps are here, the duffel back straps are in the front, but it's still not high quality enough for me to share it with you guys. So when we create product, grab that. When we create product, we really invest in it, highest quality material. So thank you. Um, did he have a question? He didn't. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. What shorts do you recommend for long? Oh, uh, we're actually designing some shorts right now because I haven't come across anything in the market that I, I'm in love with. If I did have a product I was in love with, I would definitely recommend you, but I don't have any shorts that I'm in love with right now. So I'd have to ponder on that. Okay. We have Nick Penn. He sent a super chat. He said, Salute Saints. And peace we have Saints. Billions in a super chat. He said, Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Okay, I think that we're pretty much finished with this particularly. I'm ready to go on to the next one. Unless there was anybody who said that there was something they needed to point out in this current video, um, which is the, um, what's this one called? This is called Fresh and Fit are Capping Hard. If there's anything you guys need to point out, uh, go ahead, send it by Super Chat. We will address it. But as of now, I think we are um, caught up on this one. We're going to move on to the next one. 
And let me acknowledge these cash apps. We have shout out to George Kelly. He writes for this ism. Shout out to Mr. Williams. He sends a tuition. Shout out to Kevin. He writes peace to the saints. Great workout this morning. Still recovering. And Kevin's in great shape, man. So it was a pleasure to get the link up with the saint. He actually most of the time is in Italy. So I'm always seeing him in Italy. So it was great to have him here in the States and have the pleasure of working out with him. It was a beautiful experience. And a lot of people drove to California just to work out. That's right. We have people story. drive from California to get this work in. You dig? Shout out to them. Okay, we have Marcellus Jordan. He sent a super chat. He said tuition. Truly appreciate that, Marcellus. And that's one of the vets as well. So now we're going on to our next one. It's getting a little juicier. It is called, They Talked About His Wife and Asked Him to box so he accepted and i kind of like this one right here and i'm gonna tell you look you know we keeping it real today baby number one what you don't do you don't talk about people's old lady you don't do that okay before you get started yeah in a super chat he said show and support i'm learning a lot from your content i appreciate that you caught up? I'm caught up, yep. Fantastic. Okay. Look, you don't talk about people's old lady, period. And I'm saying that before the video even starts. So I am aware that Myron spoke up on his old lady and the clip is about to be played. But he spoke up on um, Preach's old lady. Don't do that. Whoever you are out in the world, do not talk about people's family members. Because I can tell you, even gangsters, when gangsters have a, a, a beef between them, there's even a, a certain level of respect to where you don't really involve people's moms and people's girlfriends. You kind of leave them out. Now, there are low levels that beefs sometimes become ugly to where everybody's on the table. I kind of got a situation like that that came up recently, but mostly you want to leave people's family out of a situation. So I do want to let the saints know that that's a cultural value. Like, do not do that. And Myron did apologize, but we can all understand if he was not forgiven, that's kind of something that's a little harder to forgive. But certainly, if you guys have ever been on a platform talking your talk and you got lit up while you start talking, you might say things you wish you could pull back. And clearly, this is something he wishes he could pull back. Let's roll that footage. Hey, David James came in Charlotte. $20. He said, peace, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Appreciate them. Appreciate them standing up. We say the facts. We give our L's and our W's, right? So real talk, man. We put an invite. If y'all want to talk shit, come back in the studio. We'll talk about it. Or we can box about it, too. Because mm -hmm. oh. I'm in the gym now. You feel me? I'm feeling, feeling nice right now. Right, that's right why right a box or preach, bro. <laughs> that's why a box or preach, bro. So you know what? Come back. Seven. Okay. So... There's a couple of things to consider here. Number one, they're an entertainment show. So they're they're literally, you'll see that they're wearing chef hats. Do you take people serious when they're wearing chef hats? Generally, no. So to be honest with you, if I were Preach and Abba watching this right now, they got on chef hats and they, they talking reckless. I'll say, you know, they running up views right now. That's cool. They running up views. And I would probably chuckle at it. To be honest, which I would chuckle like he don't really want no smoke. He don't want no smoke. And I just chuckle. And when Myron said that Fresh wants to box preach, I would probably be like, you know, you can't speak for another man, right? If we speak in our hands, everybody got to speak on their own hands. So I wouldn't take that seriously. I wouldn't take that as a threat. And also, given the nature of what Fresh has said that previously, like, you know, he jokingly exaggerates. He engages in what's called hyperbole, which is to exaggerate for literary or comedic effect. And so, for example, when he was in the earlier clip, he had said, oh, you know, women's time with me is priceless. He's teasing. He's talking his talk. You know, that's all good fun. So I, to be honest with you, if I was watching this, I wouldn't really take this serious right now. Okay, Javi Ramirez sent another super chat. He said, we'll definitely purchase the gym bag. We'll show up to the 10K with my sass and running belt. We'll make so a more smart move since supporting. Beautiful. I put the belt there if you want it. Since oh, yeah. People at the 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah, it is a 10 out of 10. And the funny thing, too, um, and you can get this at um, thesassin.com slash product. You probably have to put that link in. Yeah. Now, mine is sweaty because I, I, just, I just used it and got a lot of work in. So mine is, is sweaty. But the Sassin running belt, what I really like about it, and the only reason I create products is when there's need. I don't do it just to do it. But 
a lot of the the Velcro becomes really ratty. So we use a modern uh, technology, a new technology actually that you'll only find on our running belt, where this connects to the the Velcro, and it never becomes ratty and it holds even stronger than normal Velcro. Um, so do grab one of these if you're really about working out. You did. And the link was just posted from our Flatism customer service. Link was just posted. Fantastic. Um, so let's get back to this talk. They talking reckless. You know, I've talked reckless before, and uh, there are consequences behind that generally. So let's hear this reckless talk. To Miami, let's box it out. <laughs> talk about uh, how about that? How about that? Yeah, no, 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 but like, no, but like, real talk, man. Like, if we're gonna have this discussion, we're hotter than you niggas, straight up. Yeah, we're harder than you guys. We put out all different types of content. Yeah. We ain't just out here reacting. Like, man, look, 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 look. oh, you took the hat off and the glasses. <laughs> oh. And later on, okay, look, one, I'm not gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. I love to hear people talking reckless. It kind of. Reminds me of how I grew up, except after people talk reckless, they throw hands where, where I grew up. But I love to hear people talking. They talk, getting in their zone. My man that took the chef hat off, ripped the glasses off his face and, and said, look, we he, he said we hotter than y'all. Oh, insulting their work. Now, I will say the fresh and fit gentlemen are hardworking and strategic, and they've grown a very successful YouTube channel. So shout out to them. Shout out to all the people who have prospered in their business. Um, so that, that was, that was, I like to see people talking, they talk and confident and he was definitely making a display. Um, I didn't take anything he said to be threatening, but, um, definitely the conversation is escalating. Uh, so let's see where it's going. On in the video, you're saying that you want to box with me. Sort of happened that I'm going to be in the U S next week. You want to fucking do this shit? Let's go. Both of you. I'll be in the U S Look, and I love to talk my shit. I, you my favorite part? He said, oh, I'll be in the U.S. Now, I like that because I like to pull up. You know, I pulled up on a lot of people. I like that part. And then I like when he said, you want a box? Both of you. I wish he'd have said it with a Russian accent or something like, do you want a box? When you want a box, both of you. I'm trying to like, did I want him to say it in an Italian accent? I don't know. You, you want a box? Both of you. Well, you're not Los right dos. Here. I changed, I, I think I changed, I wanted to be something else halfway through. I was like, I'm not Russian anymore. But yeah, I like how he said both of you, because that's how I feel. Like, I, I be feeling like Hercules out here. When the beef about to pop off, in my mind, I'm Rambo. So I like how he said both of you. Let's let's see what else he got to say. Next fucking week. Sending super chat, he said, peace to the saints from France. Really enjoying your content. Appreciate that. And I think I might have heard a cash app, so let us let us address it. Um, just shout out to Kevin Reed. Oh, no, actually, he looks like he sent me an invoice on PayPal for zero dollars. Wow. Kevin, technical difficulties over there. Shout out to Brandon, comes through by a cash app since you're 10 bucks. Truly appreciate that, Saint. Okay, now let's get back to this boss talk. You heard me? We talking reckless on both sides. Let's get it and and uh, preach. I'm gonna just rewind him 15 seconds because he about to say he about to say something that I like to hear. Let's go, both of you. I'll be in the U.S. next fucking week. Hold up, hold up. I'll, let's go. I like that. I like that. I like. I like two parts of it. One, I like that it wasn't grammatically correct. You hear me? Like he, he really Haitian. He didn't say I'll be in the U.S. So I'll be in U.S. next week. Like we usually say the U.S., bro. But go ahead with your bastards. I'll be in U.S. next week. And I like that he said next week because if we gonna get this in, you heard me. Let's get it in. We'll move this furniture. We're going to get it in right here. And that's what I like. That's why, I like, when I remember things popping off, it wasn't like, hey, we're going to fight next week. We're going to fight. Let's schedule this. Uh, do you have your iPad on you? Let's schedule this. No, no, no. If you're going to get some work in, let's do it right now. Okay, we we could go out back or we can move this furniture. I like that. Shout out to him. We have Ozzy sent a super chat. He said, peace to the saints. Question in the chat. Thanks. And the question is, Marquette, I have a history with a female who likes to post half nude photos on social media. Mm. I wanted to make an OnlyFans for her and make money to fund my small business. Right. How would you bring this up? So he's trying to get into the ism with it, the old kind of ism. He ain't messing with the Marquetteism. He's messing with a little bit of that, that old trade. Okay. So, Saint, number one, 
there's so many ways to do things that you don't always want to go to the old way of doing things. So what I'm saying is that there's a such thing as corporate pimping, right? So you're basically trying to be half pimping, chili pimping, and putting her on OnlyFans, which kind of reminds me of Craigslist pimping, which no longer exists. And when you're doing things backward like that, they tend to disappear. But you should always be thinking toward the future. Now, mind you, I've been a technologist by trade, so the future is kind of my bread and butter. So you always want to ask yourself as a businessman, what's next? So if you want this girl to bring you in the dough, why can't you keep it simple? And whatever her real job is, you just have her bring you that money. Because at the end of the day, she should be laying it all on you and let you manage that because she'll know what to do with it, I promise you. And the evidence that women don't mostly know what to do with their money is this. You got girls who are making six figures and seven figures on OnlyFans. October 1st, that, that fountain will be shut off. What month comes after October? November? November, yes. November 1st, they'll be back broke again. Cars getting repoed, uh, houses getting foreclosed on. Why? Because they didn't know how to manage and put to together a real plan. That's why they need guidance. Mm -hmm. So I advise you to do things in a way that's future oriented. Why would you be trying to get her on a platform that's dying? Huh? That's like trying to start a newspaper in 2021. That's not smart moving. Okay, we have Patrick Ellis in the super chat. He said, peace to the saints, new to the channel, and loving the content. Thank Appreciate you for the coherent and truly insightful material. That man is intelligent. And then we have Dogmatics in a super chat. He said, this is hilarious. Peace to the saints. <laughs> True story. Shout out to Justin. Came through by Cash App. He writes, the headbands are amazing. Oh, I appreciate that. And I made the headbands because I get in work. You heard me? And by the time you get in work, and I'm going to start posting up these videos. I'm, I'm a touch behind on this content stuff. But I just squeeze that headband out. I like to see the hard work drip out. Because as we say, exercise is prayer. The holy water is the sweat. You dig. So make sure you're really getting it in. And the headbands are almost out. Oh, the headbands are almost out. Hey, sorry to break it to you, Saints. I've been informed the headbands are almost out. So uh, if you do want the headbands, you better order them today because low-key, by the end of the stream, they'll probably be sold out. We just have a couple units. They come in packs of five, three black. Or excuse me, is it three, three black, black, two blue? blue. Yeah. yeah, three black, two blue. So you probably should order those now. Those will probably be gone. So on the replay, they might not be there. We have the watcher sent a super chat. He said, keep giving us truth and knowledge we deserve. I appreciate that. Can you lower that AC? I'm still baking over here. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Let's get back to this work. These boys talking reckless and I love it. So we'll put gloves on because not only this, that's why I have a problem. Now you talk shit about my wife. This nigga preaches married, tied to a fucking beluga well somewhere. And y'all niggas talking shit. And you Myron, Myron, ah, Myron, ah, bruh, nah, bruh, nah. See, here's the thing, though, about that, ah, about that comment right there, that right there. See, there's some people who are goons, right? You disrespect them, they're going to go all the way out. There's some people that you could turn into a goon when you make the wrong move. Like they might be a normal citizen, but you talk about their old lady or their mom or their sister. You, you do something foul to their family. They might turn into a goon. Then there's people who are suckers. He doesn't strike me as a sucker. Definitely he's not a goon, but he might be turning into one based on this comment. And I will acknowledge that Myron has obviously apologized. Um, and I just want to advise all of you as well as myself, because sometimes I get in my bag and I might say some reckless. Now, let me tell you, I damn sure ain't going to apologize to any of you suckers. And I could even tell you that I'm a real supervillain. So not only when I disrespect you, do I usually mean every word of it. But after that, I might still say F you and F your wife. If it were me, you see, I'm telling you, don't say that. But if I would have said it, I would have said F you and F your wife, and I still feel that way. Yeah, because I'm really about it. But if you're not about it, you got to stay away from that. And my advice to the Fresh and Fit gentlemen and everyone else watching is this. Be yourself, which is to say, if you really the super villain, you got to ride that train all the way out, all the way out. You can't transition from being the super villain and then try to become the superhero. No, I don't work like that. I came in the game, let you guys know I'm the bad guy. 
I came in the game and said, I'm not a part of the manosphere and I don't want to make friends and slap fives with you guys because I look at all of you guys as inferiors. I came in the game like that and I'm going to come up out of the game that way. I'm going to come out the top of the game like that. So I'm writing it out because that's why I really am. I don't need to make friends because I'm strong enough to operate on my own. Huh? People band together when they're weak most, most of the time. Huh? So I say that to say anything you choose to ride on, saints, ride that all the way to the wheels fall off. Because this is what you notice. Even though it's an integrity-based position for Myron to apologize and say, hey, I was wrong. Look how the internet do him when he's showing integrity. Look how the internet do him. Oh, now you want to apologize. You apologize to the wrong people. You apologize to your You're not apologizing to them. Like, oh, you sorry now. It's too late. Like, they don't respect the backtrack. Me, I tell you, he was dead wrong. And he apologized. And him as a normal, everyday citizen, I respect that. He never portrayed himself as a super villain. Um, so I think it's a good thing that he's correcting his error. But the internet doesn't respect that, right? Because they just want drama. They want drama and entertainment. And they're getting a double dose of it right now. Here we have someone just bought uh, Slap Bands. We're down to like three people left that can purchase. Oh, there's only three. Okay, sweat there's only band, three yeah. packs of Sweat Bands left. Headbands, headbands. Yeah. They ain't Sweat Bands till you perform. They start off as headbands. There's only three units left. Okay, we have Dominique Marcel sitting super chat. He said, in Baker, California, filling up, heading to Vegas, home of the Saints. Getting the same True. perspective I expected on the silly internet matter. Peace to the Saints. True indeed. And before I got on here, a lot of folks were, you know, just bashing folks. And yeah, it's easy. And I just want to also just shout out, like, how weak are you when people are already down and you run up to kick them? They down, you run up to kick them. I want to say to the whole internet of nerds and dishonest clout chasers that Fresh and Fit has already been drugged through the dirt. What what do you get out of making an additional video to repeat what everyone has already said? That's so goofy. And you can't find one video where there's alternative opinion. It's like, God damn, I'm like the only person who can provide you insight because all these fools want to repeat the same thing and they want to join the bandwagon because it's easy to kick somebody when they're down. But don't forget this. Don't forget this. How many of these nerds probably been DM and fresh and fit? Hey, can I come on your show? Or hey, let's collaborate. That's how people are. They don't have loyalty. And see, I'm from a different cloth because I always had to exist under the reality of like, if I catch a case, I hope my old lady visit me. I hope she put money on my books. I hope my, my people remember me. So I always try to keep it solid like that when I got other people who need me because I want them to show me the same love. And this world is filled with so many people who have no integrity and no loyalty. You fall down, they want to kick you. You fall from the top, they act like they don't know you. But when you out there, oh, everyone's a fan. Think about the baby, for example. I hate his name. I don't even like saying his name. But he was on. Then he gets canceled. Kanye want to cancel him? Oh, I thought black men support black men. Not anymore, huh? That's why I don't get down with all this black men stuff. If you ain't a part of the assassin, you're a stranger to me. Yeah, because black men don't support black men. Let's be real. We get a lot of, we get like one to two percent of our sales are fraudulent, meaning people buy our stuff, they receive it, and then tell their bank they didn't receive it so they can get their money back. It's a lot of scammers. We do a lot of sales, high volume. So one to two percent sounds small, but it's a lot. Those are mostly black men doing that to me who provides them good product, great customer service. Yeah. So there ain't no love out in this world. There's only love within the communities where you know people and you know what they stand for. Uh. Okay, we have D. Aramoso. He said he's super chat. He said, do you truly feel that Meyer's apology was acceptable? Don't you feel an apology should be as loud as the disrespect? If somebody's apologizing me, I certainly want the apology to be as loud as the disrespect. But to be honest with you, I don't really care because it's not my affair. So the particulars of that, I don't care about. I'm speaking of the grander things, meaning like, should you talk about somebody's wife? No. Like, I want you guys to understand that because that'll get you killed. Um, should you mention boxing if you don't really want to box? No, because it's not like basketball. You get killed in there too. huh? So these are all of the big things I want to talk about. 
And if you do end up wanting to mess with that ring, uh, Myron, uh, Fresh, Abba, Preach, get those Saint Center hand wraps, you did, because they're the best on the market. And wrap them hands up and let's get this working. And I tell you, if you guys actually throwing hands, your boy's catching a flight to Miami. I'm going to be there. Yes, indeed. And I got a lot of respect for people who throw hands because I throw hands. And the thing is, once you get in that ring, your mouth can't get you out of nothing. Once you get in that ring, your mama can't fight for you and your 1.4 million fans, your, your half a million fans, your 340,000 fans can't do a damn thing. We're going to see what you're really about. Yeah. So I'd love to see a fade because I like seeing fades. But let me be real with you all. As a saint, the saint in me looks at Abba and Preach and I don't see fighters. The saint in me looks at Fresh and Fit and I don't see fighters. Not disrespecting them. I'm just saying I don't see that in them. I see love in all four of these brothers. I see lightness in all four of these brothers. And fighters are, they kind of grimy. You know what I'm saying? And I always say, number one, be yourself. So there's no need to get in this ring and engage in violence when what you guys are dealing with in terms of disagreement, you can squash by disconnecting from each other. Just don't mention each other. Or you can be more mature about it and say, hey, we have our differences. Let's shake on it and keep everything respectful. But I don't think there's a really a need to throw hands because I don't see that in any of them. I don't think that's their actual nature. And I hope that they wouldn't engage in that. I throw hands because I was brought up throwing hands. I throw hands because it helps me from not slapping the shit out of people on the streets. You heard me? Yeah. We have the Soro being, he sent a super chat. He said, peace to the saints. I just bought myself one set of headbands. Shout out to the saints. So I guess there's two units left now. <laughs> okay, we're caught up. Okay. Absolutely. That's a good point. I appreciate that. All right. Now let's carry on with the, the gentleman expressing himself. He's talking shit about my country. Old bitch said that he was about to send me on a boat to my country, to Haiti. Yeah. Cool. I didn't hear that comment. If he said he's going to send you to Haiti, that's not necessarily talking about Haiti. I've been to Haiti a couple times, actually. One thing I will tell you, you don't want no problem with them Zos. And if you live in Miami, you might as well not even use any words that start with Z because them Haitians ain't playing. You heard me? So let me say that for everybody, including my damn self. Uh, let's keep the hate the name of the great Haitian people out our goddamn mouth. You heard me? But just so you guys know that I really mess with Haiti and know their history, um, check out the video that I did on the recent assassination of the Haitian president and I also run down some Haitian history to you. And I talk about Francois Duvalier, who's one of the most important black men to ever live. Um, so do soak up that game. When you guys take a break from watching uh, How to Get Laid, when you take a break from being entertained and you want to see some real check that out and by the way send tuition to the big homie because you get an education yeah he, he sent a super chat he said would you consider training fresh and fit for the fight i would love to train fresh and fit and to be honest with you um and i don't know the size of abba and priest because i've never seen them in person but myron's six two and he's slim and i can only assume that if he trained hard and he doesn't have if he's not unathletic he doesn't have to be athletic if he's not unathletic at his height and his body shape. He could really do some work. So just assuming that he trained to his peak and Abba uh, or Preach trained to their peak, they wouldn't be able to beat him because he has a superior physicality. Now, boxing is not about physicality. Boxing is about your heart, your endurance, your IQ, your emotional intelligence. So that's who's going to win. But I would love to train him, man. Like I love turning people into killers. I would be honored to train him. It would be a pleasure. A pleasure. Hey, Kent Jones and Super Chat said, "Peace to the Saints." Peace to the Saints. Shout out to Jacob. He writes, "Peace to the Saints." Marquette. The previous video which you were watching shows Abba and Preach really go into their stance, which stance which stated, uh, which started the whole debate. I highly suggest you watch a bit more of it so you can see the entire backstory. Well, Saint, it'd be great if you would have summarized it in your message because uh, we have more content to get to, more videos of theirs, um, so we can't watch all of them, right? So you could have given me a timestamp or summarized it. That would have been wildly helpful. Shout out to Vincent. Comes through via Cash App. He writes, Peace to the Saint. Truly appreciate that, Vincent. All right, let's see what he's talking about. He's talking his talk. Next week. 
I'll be in I'll be in the States. I'll drop by your fucking studios. You know where it is? Give me the address. I'll be right there. Don't come unprepared. We'll do it. You want to do this? Let's go. We'll put gloves on. It'll be legal. I know Florida lies. I take one bitch, then I take the other one. Oh. Let's go. Oh, he running trains on Fresh and Fit. He said, let me give me this hoe, and I'm back for round two. That's disrespectful, Yerby. Now, here's the thing. If you read my book, you would hear about it. I did that very thing, but I didn't do it in a boxing ring. I beat up two cats right in a row. Didn't get hit once. It's a beautiful thing. You did real life. Let's go. Yeah, you want to talk? I'll be there. Okay. You know what? I wasn't there last time. I wasn't. But now you want to do this? You want to you set up the box? Man? Let's go. Okay. We can set it up. Both of you bitches. Let's go. Hey, you want to do this? Let's go. Let's go. I you know, he reminds me, come on, come on, Cletus, come on, Cletus. He remind me of the grandma from the Nutty Professor when she wanted to throw heads. It sounded like he wanted it. It sounded like it, but I'll tell you what. I don't find all four of them, they don't really look like fighters. But uh, if they really want to get it in, I would love to help out and, you know, make sure it's a proper event. Whether If y'all want to do it in the ring, we could go in Miami. I'm happy to train uh, fresh and fit. Um, and if they don't want the training, I'll been preach. I'm happy to train you guys just the same. And uh, if you guys want to just keep it G and just get it out the way, you could pull up in uh, Southern California, you heard me, or you could pull up out in Las Vegas and we could have the Saints come and sanction this and we could let y'all get that work in. Huh? Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, he's just going to do it from. Okay, cool. I don't think this is going to happen, but I would love to see it happen. And my last note on this piece is like, as somebody who boxes, like I don't like when people play with the sport. It's like, let's not talk about it. Let's be about it. And, you know, as a businessman, you notice things convert when there's urgency. So when the consumer has urgency, things get done. So if this don't happen in the next two weeks, it probably will never happen. But, um, you know, shout out to y'all. And uh, for the people who really get their work in, the same, the center hand wraps. The link is in the description. This is the best product on the market. You did. Carrying on to the next one. And I like Abba and Preach uh, in as much as they got some great digs. Their next video is called Fluke and Fraud. Try to apologize. This is the one where someone said 616. <laughs> go to 616. Okay, so we're going to open it up a little bit. And then we're going to go to 616 uh, per the Super Chat request. Um, and shout out to them for their marketing genius. Well done. Here we go. Fluke and fraud. Oh, they foul for that one, boy. Today's topic, the boys over at Fresh and Fit decided to stop screaming. And uh, they didn't make, like, posted full something video. on their community page as an apology. Fresh and Fit, we apologize to our supporters. From this point forward, we are not going to engage in any beef. We are here to help you guys navigate women, fitness, and finances, not drama. We're going to keep giving you guys the content you subscribe for. We apologize Next for deviating, week. but we're back on track. Men already get attacked enough in the space. Ah, uh, see, this is a this is a touchy thing because it's kind of mature and civilized to apologize. It's kind of mature and civilized, but it's also backtracking, and people generally don't like backtracking. Uh, so uh, it's, a it's a tough one, but I can tell you when your enemy is reading your apology out loud in the public sphere, that's embarrassing for sure. Like, absolutely. Uh, and so I'm not saying don't apologize, but I'm saying if you think before you speak and mean what you say, you'll have to apologize less. And so when I'm giving you guys guidelines, I give you stuff to live by. And I even if on my IG and I'll put my IG in right here. It's Instagram.com slash Marquette Devon. You can find infographics where I give you a list of questions to ask yourself so you know if you should speak. Before I say this, is this going to make me a dollar? Okay. Is this going to endear someone to me? Meaning make them like me more so they want to work with me or help me. Is this going to be heard by the listener? Meaning is a person in an emotional state where they can accept this information? So when you ask yourself these questions, if the answer is no to all those questions, shut up. 
because generally what you say will hurt you. And in this case, both the initial comment hurt him of disrespecting someone's wife. And then the second comment hurt him when they made the apology. And let me let you guys know, whoever you are, when you engage in a beef of any kind, whether it's in the corporate sphere, whether it's in uh, romantic relationships, personal relationships, or the internet, holla at your boy for a, a consultation because I start up a war room and we can get you equipped with the appropriate strategy to meet your ends. You did. But don't go in there without consulting a general because I've been through a lot of wars. I could have got them through this a lot cleaner. You did. But now they know. Call the big home. Yes, this hurts to hear them read out the apology. That sucks. Got him. And let me point out that from a strategy standpoint, these gentlemen, uh, Preach and Abba, were very clever because they've basically unleashed a blitzkrieg, right? They didn't damn near made four or five videos in, in Fresh and Fit. I guess made maybe one or two, um, which are no longer up. And here's another thing. If you're dealing with a superior um competitor the best thing you can generally do is not engage them so for example there are people i've critiqued their game notice none of them ever responded any person whose game i critiqued they never responded why because they looked at my professional background my economic or shall we say financial background my educational background my romantic background and they're like we don't measure up it will be stupid to go against him and get crushed in pub public form. So they just shut up as they should. That was wise on their part. So that's another strategy that you could take sometimes, which will benefit you, which is silence. Yeah. Okay, Cop 30 sent a super chat. He said, Abba was military and preached just MMA and bounce. Shout out, shout out, man. So they know what they're doing. You heard me? And them MMA boys are serious. Like, as a boxer, I consider MMA to be barbaric, but I still go and get the best seats, you did. I was right there when Connor got his, his ankle broken. That was ugly. Yuck. So we are not going to contribute to it. Best of luck to have been preaching their future endeavors. We'll see you guys tonight for a fresh and fit after hours. What do you think about their apology? He apologized to their supporters. He didn't apologize to me or my wife. For my country later that same evening real quick guys okay because uh i know this is probably on everyone's minds we already got six thousand plus live viewers so thank you so much for coming in only in four uh, minutes yeah only yeah. Yeah, seriously within four minutes so guys hey it just real quick shout out to abba and preach much success shout out to fresh and fit much success and let me tell you how phony the internet is for all the hate their views are still getting run up and they will continue to get run up and y'all will still be on the lives. So stop with the mouth service. You heard me? Shout out to them. May they continue to prosper. And lastly, shout out to Takashi69 because he is the mascot of the internet. He's the mascot of the internet. And I guess I would be the opposite of that reality. You did. And Takashi69 represents all of the phoniness, not only of creators, but also of consumers. Because fake creators can never prosper without phony consumers. So don't ever point out to accuse someone of being something that you're not. huh? And by the way, in my comments, don't mention other people because I don't mess with nobody. If I've not out of my mouth said I mess with somebody or had them on my platform, don't mention their name. That'll get you timed out or blocked because I don't sign off on them. I don't even mention brands. Like I could be wearing a brand. And if somebody asks about it, if I don't know about who's running it, and how their values are, I'm not going to talk about it because I don't promote things that I'm ignorant of. Huh. Carrying on. We'll go talk about this real fast. <laughs> on this podcast, we talk about accountability, okay? Yeah. And we are not above taking accountability. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, we made a mistake, okay? It is not cool to insult a man's country and or wife live on air. We should have kept the disagreement let me just throw in a caveat, uh, especially when the country is Haiti and you live in Miami. That's like in Seoul, Mexico, and you live in L.A. That's a bad idea. I used to have this girl in East L.A. Shout out to East Los. You dig. Shout out to my essays. You dig. I didn't even like going to pick Shorty up because there were so many cholos around that joint. I ain't even like pulling up. 
But in LA, you don't insult Mexicans. In Miami, you don't insult Haitians. I just want to throw that out there for everybody in case you were wondering. Carrying on. On the topic and not the people. Yep. Okay? Smart people discuss ideas. Stupid people discuss people. And we made a mistake. All right? So with that said, we apologize, okay, for talking about his wife, his country, and making ad hominem attacks on them. Their fellow YouTubers... A shout out to the goddamn editor. The editing is masterful. I love the overlay of his facial expression. I've been preach. Shout out to your editor. Damn, they good. That boy good. Woo! Are those likes up? Are they showing any appreciation, There's Bridget? Appreciation. Yeah, that's over a thousand likes. That's respectable, but I'm still trying to do the math. Now I'm not the brightest star in the sky, but if there's way more people watching and there's a thousand likes, that still don't add up. Now, Ain't that like a host showing up talking about, I've been working all night and I only got $400? Would you be happy? No. Nah, you might not have. I ain't going to. Woo-wee! Woo-wee! $400, you've been out all night? Oh, something ain't adding up. Yeah. Tell that hoe to go get my money. Carrying on. If we have disagreements, we're going to have disagreements, but the way we went about it was not right. Okay? Yeah. So we got to hold ourselves accountable as well. And from this point forward, we're bearing the hatchet. We wish the best to and preach. Yeah, the best, man. We're going to keep making content, giving you guys what you want, and we're going to stay away from the drama. That being said, the boxing, you got our number. Hit us up on the side. You know where we're at. Where I'm at. Hey, hey, fresh, bruh. I like that. That was some goon stuff. He said, my man did just apologize publicly. And then my man said, that being said, I still want the fade. Oh. <sighs> That being said, we can still throw these hands, though. Wow. I kind of like that. I mean, so let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't even do that. You proposed a fight, talked shit. Then when the person accepted, you're like, I'll bring $500,000. I offered you $20,000 to just show up. Win or lose, you were going to get paid. Hey. hey, let me pause this. Hey, let me pause this right now. 20 racks, i pull up and throw hands. Where is that? Cuz, me, I'm not above 20 racks. You hear me? I, Bridget, you think Marquette Devon Burton will ever have so much money that he won't go knock somebody out for 20 racks? I've been knocking people out for free for years. Right. I knock them, I knock somebody for 20. Bro, put them 20 racks up, how to sing the center pull up on you. That's beautiful. Shout out to him because that's G stuff. I like that, man. Oh, I like that. You hear me? And by the way, 20 racks could get somebody hurt. I don't care what country we're talking about now. In Haiti, 20 racks could get your whole family body and some. In America, 20 racks could get somebody hurt. That's a beautiful thing. Now, I don't know what the back-end conversation was about the money and all this stuff, but at the end of the day, we're talking about a simple fade, man. We could get this cracking this weekend. We could have everybody pull up to Vegas. You heard me? We could have the Saints identify a location we could keep it gangster and let y'all we could throw these hands until somebody go down and then we gonna say it's all done get up shake hands and whoever lost you need to let the other person know you the big homie now and i'm gonna show respect because that's how it is every now and then you got to catch a friendly fade and all that is is just establishing that hierarchy so the people don't get crazy and think they somebody that they not that's all that is we ain't got to put up racks and get a promoter and all this nah we don't even need 20 racks. We could do this for the free. I can arrange. I'd be happy to do it. Indeed. And I also am accepting $20,000 $20, fade. So if anybody want a $20,000 fade, the saint in the center ain't above it. You hear me? What can I do with 20 Gs? Like, what do I spend 20 Gs on? You, Yeah, that uh, we could go get some more suits made. Yeah, I'll go make some more suits. Yeah. yeah, that's about what a vacation cost me. Yeah. And you to check beforehand. And you still coward out talking about, no, we need to get promoters and all these guys think everything is about money. It's not about money. And I'm gonna say this to you guys: I don't play with. I'm money. not gonna. I'm not gonna buy that. This ain't about money because I feel like most of what they did was to run up views, and running up views is about money. So I'm not gonna really buy that. But I did enjoy their that video that I just watched. So shout out to them for providing good entertainment. You had a six sixteen. Damn! I just closed it. Let me pull it back up. You are a endless source of great reminders today. We say the fact. Oh, I didn't click the wrong one. It was, it was 616 on yeah, the fluke and whatever. Fluke and what was it? Fluke and I might have to damn near Google the link again. Power 
Oh, it was a fluke and fraud try to apologize. Okay, I found it. Okay, it was 616? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Man, I'm over here operating technology, boy. All right, let's go to 616 per the request of the Super Chat. We do honor those who honor us. So thank you very much for the contribution. And we will play this piece that you referenced. These guys turned, changed their tune once they saw subscribers going down. That's how you know they lack principle. They're so caught up in numbers. They changed what they said. They deleted their videos. They deleted everything, right? Just because they lost subscribers. Mm -hmm. You want to stand behind a man? If you want to call us who out. Who only yeah. stands behind numbers? Yo, how long have we been at 1.38 for? The past three fucking months? Yeah. It ain't what it is. Who cares? We haven't it grown is, that much. It is what it is. Does it matter? Not really. It didn't matter when we are 300K. It didn't matter when we are 69K. Y'all notice the outro still says 69K because it's all. What's that? Yeah, okay. Well, um, they spoke their piece. I appreciate you sharing that uh, part. And the <laughs> the last video, uh, Saints, will be the following one. It is entitled, it's entitled, He Bought a Firearm. Okay, real quick, too. We have French sent a super chat. He said tuition. Oh, shout yeah, out to yes. Grinch. Shout out to Grinch. We appreciate the support. And shout out to the YouTubers who openly mess with the saint in the center. You dig? Because a lot of your favorite YouTubers watch my stuff. And I kid you not, I've had multiple YouTubers reach out to me, say, bruh, I love your work, but I'm friends with this other YouTuber who's who doesn't like you and damn sure won't conf confront you. You hear me? He doesn't like you. And I'm too pussy to fuck with you publicly. So I just want to send you a DM and let you know I fuck with you. And I could understand that. You know, like no hard feelings on that. You dig? No hard feelings. I appreciate people showing me the love. Um, but at the end of the day, if you's a real one, you know what I'm saying? Be real and live your life. Because what I can tell you as a man is the following. Say that uh, Abba and Preach were my best buddies and I didn't get along with Fresh and Fit. If Abba and Preach, my best buddies, have fresh and fit on their show for business purposes, I'm not going to hate that because I'm a hustler. You heard me? I want you guys to do what pays. That's what your business is about. That's what capitalism is about. But being friends with them is different. You did business with them and that's fine. I don't have an issue with that. I wouldn't slow up your pocketbook. I would never knock the hustle. We don't get down like that. But I just want to let you guys know, whoever you watch, they watch me. Don't let them lie to you. And when you hear some game come out that almost sound good, they probably even regurgi regurgitated something they heard the big homies say. I'm just saying. Anyways, let's get to this last video. I appreciate, appreciate you all being here to fellowship with the big homie. Listen, I was about to go to the airport within the next two, uh, 30 minutes, okay? Because putting all this behind us, you know. All right, guys, I heard time. Look at this. All right, guys, I heard with my boy Peter helping me with my first guns. Shout out to you, man. Hey, pleasure. Pleasure, Walter. Thank you. Hello, everyone out there. Yeah, we here at American Security Consultants, we're experts in firearms training, situational awareness, defensive tactics. Are you serious? Oh. That's funny. That's funny. It's just so far as funny. I'm going to continue playing this, but I do want to give a quick note that, hey, I'm a big promoter in being able to protect yourself because what you might be unaware of, and there is a great example of this in New York City, is that the police are not obligated to protect you. So I'm saying that there are documented cases, particularly in New York City, where individuals were stabbed to death in the presence of the police and the police failing to act, they were not legally liable, which is to say the citizen was not able to successfully sue the police officer because it came out in legal precedence that the police are not legally required to protect your life. That don't sound right, does it? Well, that's the actual law. So you better protect your damn self. But let's carry on here. And just quick note, when you see people doing something, especially as a hustler, you have to ask yourself, what's the play? Are they running a play? Um, so I will say, I don't know if Fresh is running a play because he did let the dude give his sales pitch and promote his business. So I don't know if dude walked in there and said, hey, man, if you show my firearms place, I'll give you a couple of for the free or for the low. Who knows? Or he might be cashing them out. 
we couldn't call it. So if there's a play, it's a beautiful thing. I love to see people doing deals. I've done a lot of deals myself, B2B deals, B2G deals, big deals, not things like this, but you get the point. Okay, we have past comps in a super chat. He said a lot of tech companies preach diversity and inclusion. Is this actually divide and conquer strategy in the form of assimilation? Yes, when they preach diversity and inclusion in the corporate sector, what they actually want is the superficial level of diversity, meaning you might be different colors, but you all think the same thing. You're all hyper liberal. You're all pro uh, Skittle people and all that good stuff. And they don't want true diversity in terms of ideas, because in fact, you can find a lot of people who are the same color, but excuse me, who are different colors, but the question is, do they think differently? And in a company where your work comes from your brain, you should want diverse ideas. So yeah, it's phony. Okay, we have Cameron sending Super Chat. He said, sending tuition. Your goals video helped me out a lot. I appreciate the value you provide. Thank you. I, that means a lot to me. And I'm always happy to help someone on their journey to success. Shout out to Deja. She writes, thanks for the ism. And then we have Reginald Dollard sending Super Chat. He said, good stuff, Marquette. Appreciate your content. Very eye-opening. Peace to the saints. Appreciate you. Thank you, Gary. Jacobo writes, 1325 to 1530 is the timestamp for the fresh and fit cap and hard video. I would really like your insight into what they discuss in that time frame. It's over a minute, 30 seconds. Peace to the saints. Okay, we may be able to come back to that. He said, the cap and hard video. So once we finish this up, we'll, we'll see if we have a an opportunity to link back to it. And shout out to Jacobo. We've actually had a consultation with him, yep. a gentleman from the East Coast. It's a beautiful thing. All right. And you think you're an alpha male? Yeah. You think you're fit to lead other men? There's two scenarios here. Maybe Fresh always really wanted a gun and this just happened to spring up and it was just appointment he set beforehand and whatever. Awesome. But to post that on IG after, if I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, right? Maybe, maybe you're that fucking stupid. Uh, number one, I, I do find this guy to be comical. Like the way he's going about this is pretty uh, funny. Like it's, it's good entertainment. I'm entertained. Uh, so shout out to Abba. I always want to sometimes switch up their names, but shout out to Abba. That was funny, well presented, and well selected. Two points I will make is that one, when you have a strap, ideally you don't want to shoot anybody. If you have, if you're a mentally healthy person, you don't want to shoot anybody. Now I can tell you that probably up until age 24, 25, I absolutely wanted to catch a body because in the environment I grew up in, that was a, a stripe that you wanted to have. You know, like I got homies, they call killer Corey or killer Rob. You wanted to have that on your name because it was a sign of respect, you know, just like that tattoo tear. You heard me? So like, I, if I'm being honest with you up until about 25, I wanted to catch me a body. Um, and so I just want to be honest, if you're mentally healthy, you don't want to kill anybody. So I will note that him copping a strap and letting people know he got the strap, it could be strategic as a deterrent. Um, so that's one thing to note could be a strategic move as a deterrent. And further, I'll point out that, you know, there's a lot of weirdos on the planet earth. If you have any amount of notoriety, you probably should have you a strap. And if you ever see the big homie walking around with that gorgeous briefcase backpack that you can pre-order from the assassin.com, you ever see me walking around with that? Just don't run up on me if you don't know me, because I'm going to go out like Rambo. You dig? And um, he mentioned that he's like, I don't know if this is your first gun or you always wanted a gun. I will say it is a touch late to be getting a strap because, man, I had my little brother busting off straps when he was six years old. And I don't mean that as hyperbole. I mean, literally, like my little brother and my mother, we drove from the LA area all the way out to Hemet, San Jacinto, to the mountains. I took my collection of UWAPs and we just had them clapping them. Why? Because I always tell my brother, if I'm not here and somebody come up in here, kill them. I don't care who it is. If the police run up in here and they ain't acting right, you bust them. I don't care. If I ain't in here, I'm telling you, you spray everything. I don't care if you hit mom, you spray everything. Don't ever let a man run up on your land. Don't you ever do that. 
Yeah. So when my little brother was six years old, oh, I taught him how to clap them things. I taught my mom how to clap them too. But the thing is, my mom's nervous. You heard me? She the type to, she get the oo-wop. She can't make it do what it needs to do at the right moment, right? So I told her, you let Larry handle this. He going to take care of things. Okay. We have Kent Jones in a super chat. He said, I know most of what you wear has meaning. What's the story behind the hat? And also, how do I get a PO box info to send some of my product to you? Who's this? Kent Jones. Uh, shout out to Kent. The hat is a hat actually produced by one of the saints who lives in Thank Miami. You. And one thing I'm really serious about are providing opportunities for people or for the saints. And I want you guys to prosper. You're me. I could be wearing my own hats that I produce for real. But I also want to wear the saint stuff to support their businesses, especially when they've done consultations with me, which the saint has done a consultation. So I want to support their businesses. And further, um, there's also opportunity if you have good product. Now, everybody doesn't have a good product. And when you send product, we put it through an approval process with multiple different people, test of quality, test of style, test of utility. And if you have good product and it's not a competitive product, we'll put it on the sassin.com and we take 10% of the top line sale. We got a lot of people who have their stuff on the sassin.com. They do the fulfillment. Uh, we take 10% for the advertising and all that stuff that we're doing for you. And you end up with way more profit than you would have on Amazon, for example. So we, we try to support. And so this is one of the Saints products. And we're really very much so about helping you succeed and thrive. Okay, we have Nance in the Super Chat. He says, this live is proof that learning can be fun. Tuition, peace to the same. Real talk. And it should be fun. And when you're learning the right things, you're going to be more attuned. Even as a person with high IQ and very, and I don't say that like boastful, I say that because when I was a young man, my I was tested and admitted into the gifted and talented education program because of my IQ. So I don't say that to be boastful, but I just say that to say as a person who comprehends very well, even myself, when I'm bored or uninterested, my comprehension declines rapidly. Not because I can't understand, but because the brain does not perform well when it's bored. So it is always nice when we can get some education and be entertained. We call it edutainment. You dig? And so I shall. To post that on IG after you challenge a man to a fight, insult his wife, insult the Haitian community and the Haitians there. Right? You're in Miami. You're an idiot. You then I'm going to say this man is an evil genius. Look. Uh, but you are an evil genius because he is milking the hell out of this. Lord knows Myron and Fresh uh, did not insult the Haitian people in the Haitian community. That's an exaggeration. And you're an evil genius, Abba. I like it. But I will say out of his for his safety, let's not keep repeating that because that ain't quite right, bro. We ain't trying to get that man hurt. That ain't quite right. You dig? Brandon Lugo sent me super chat. He said, wish I had a professor, professor disengaging in college piece. And let me keep it funky with you. You'll never have a professor disengaging because they don't make enough money at any college to pay me to be a professor. As a businessman, I make way more money than I can make being an esteemed professor at Harvard, Yale, Berkeley, Johns Hopkins, any of these places. Professors get paid well compared to maybe a middle class person. But compared to a business owner who has a product-based business, I'd, have, I'd laugh my ass off if Harvard offered me a professorship. I'd laugh my ass off, wipe my ass with a check. Um, which is to say, oh, man, I keep cursing. I'm sorry. Can you let me know? Yeah. Um, which is to say that you'll probably never have a, a professor who's exceptionally talented because if they are exceptionally talented, they'll probably go into business and rake in the millions, right? Shout out to McKenzie, comes through via cash. I write tuition, peace to the saints. I truly appreciate that. Uh, Abba's an evil genius. I can't watch any more of this genius uh, vilification that this man is engaging in. It's just, it's high quality. This man has read, uh, he, this man must be one of my subscribers at patreon.com slash the saint and the center. And he's watched my breakdown of Machiavelli's The Prince. It's a seven part video series. And because this man is engaging in some very vicious tactics and they're effective too. Ooh -wee. Um, what was that video that the saint had wanted us to check out those timestamps on? What it was the fraud and fluke, was it? No, I thought like no cap or something. Oh, yeah, it was the no cap. Okay, here we go. 
Fresh and Fit are capping hard. That was the name of it. Today's topic means. So we're gonna pull this one up and uh, and then wrap up. You caught up? Yeah. Well, Mitchell McCauley just sent a super chat. He said, "How do you kill the indirectness within yourself?" Marquette Kelly in your book reminds me of the modern man and how to deal with problems. Well, you have to give me a little more elaboration on what he means by uh, what he means when he's referencing Marquette Kelly. And by the way, for those who don't know and have not had the privilege of reading my book, which you can get in the description, my name is Marquette, which obviously is very unique. But I actually grew up in Section 8 housing, government subsidized housing for the impoverished with another kid named Marquette. And his name was Marquette Kelly. And he was obviously a part of my life for some time. And you know, he had some very unfortunate experiences, which I kind of use him as a parallel for like, hey, if you make this decision, you end up here. And they're like two Marquettes evolving and it shows the different results and outcomes they got. So I don't know exactly which situation you're talking about, but when you mention indirectness in yourself, the best way to get that out of you is to burn it out, which is to say, go through the fire. And one of the things I appreciate about the fight sport is that it lets you know what reality is. One of your biggest anxieties when you start boxing is getting punched square in the face hard by someone who trains how to punch you hard seven days a week, right? That can be something that causes you to feel anxious. In my case, I'm arrogant, so I was overly zealous to get in the ring thinking I'd perform better than I actually did. I performed pretty well, but... I didn't know what I was getting into. I could promise you that one. So I say that to say, once you actually get in the ring and you get hit hard, you're like, oh, that's not as bad as I thought. Depending on who you are, you find out who you are and you're going to lose that indirectness because, you, you know, going bone to bone with another man. Oh, it's going to make you tough. And all that BS is going to fade away. You're, you're going to learn about the real world. Here I am. Okay. I thought you were like signaling me over there. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Cool. So we pulled up the the video sample that they wanted to reference and the timestamp from Jacobo was 1325. So let's see. 1325. Man, you guys are students of this stuff, man. It's amazing. Game has no game because now yeah, yeah. it's kind of like, okay, you know what? Today I'm lazy. I just finished my business meeting. I'll call Jacobo to smash. And just the mentality is is, is a very lazy, bro. What's wrong if dudes don't have game? What's wrong if they just want to pay for it, smash, and be like, what if? What's the issue with that? What would, I think it's good that a lot of dudes do have game, but not everybody can have game. So what's wrong with some dudes just being like, man, just throw the pussy at me and get the fuck out of it? I'll say this, right? So this is something that is going to come into the person's uh, nature and what they really want out of life. Yes. And not every guy needs game. You're right. However... For you to live your best life while you're here, you do want a burning desire. Now, get this. Most guys don't understand, for example, okay, if I pay for it, right, I'll get what I want. But if they did pay for it, they get much more because, once again, I suspect these guys are paying $100 for hookers. They're, they're getting cheap end ones. Maybe that's what's happening. Right? It's like a street walker. If you pay high money, these girls come correct. So what are you saying about you're going to get more out of, like, some sexual – it's not true at all. But anyways, yes, when you pay – Oh, hell nah. Look, hell nah. Look, woo. There's a couple levels. Good Lord. What are the likes at? I'm about to drop some real game. Hey, look, I'm about to drop some serious game right now. Them likes better. What the likes? They're where we are with viewers now, but obviously okay. that means people that have. Yeah, okay, look. Check this out. That means you're about to drop game. Is that what that means? Carry on. <laughs> Check this out. Number one, I respect that Fresh is verbally holding it down for the men who don't want to be tricks and tools used by women and extorted and exploited by, not by women, but by harlots. Because whether you're being extorted by a prostitute directly or by an OnlyFans girl, you are losing in that engagement that business deal you're on the weak side of it i promise you so i appreciate that he's saying this is not the way and he's correct this is not the moral way and if you're a man who does not have game and you don't have any other charms to bring women in you'd be best off doing the 
traditional thing, get you one woman who can appreciate you for who you really are, go ahead and, and link up in an enduring relationship and carry on. Huh? Stop trying to be somebody else that you're not. Stop trying to live player if you ain't player. Now, if you feel like you want to slay some dimes and you don't have game, then as Abba pointed out, your primary option is to pay. But here's what's bothering me. They're lying and making it seem like there's morality to paying because you're saving time and you're saving effort. No, they're also lying and pretending as though if you're not paying directly to a prostitute, you're paying via taking the woman to dinner. You're paying via your time and your attention. Do not muddy these things. That is all the protection of their ego. And let me explain how. They will not say the truth, which is this. This is the truth. I pay for very attractive high-end escorts because I am not visually attractive enough to get it for free. I pay for high-end escorts because I am not talented enough or clever enough or charming enough to get it for free based on my inherent or skill-based merit. And that is taking full responsibility for where you exist on the human hierarchy that resulted largely from your genetics and partly from your conditioning and training. They're not honest enough to say, this is where I exist. And from this low level, if I want a woman up here, the only way to get it is to pay that cash. They don't want to say that. Why? Because the human psyche wants to protect itself because we all want to feel good about ourselves. And none of us just want to say, hey, I'm too fat. I'm too ugly. I'm too stupid. I'm not tall enough to get these super bad ones. That's what it is. How do I know? Because I've always been on the other side of it. I've been the guy that a broad will pay. Y'all paying broads. I'm the one that the broad pays. I've been on the other side of it. I had a, ooh, they almost and took me there. I didn't almost said it. I held it in that time. I've been in a sit. I had females walk up to me and tell me, Marquette, I just like the way you move your hands when you talk. It's my favorite thing about you. Huh? You don't know nothing about that. That's a different level of swag. You heard me? Baby says, she said, when you talk, your hands make the music for the speech, the harmony. I love it. Huh? Yeah. That's called being player. You heard me? When a woman likes the smell of you, and I'm not talking about in the literal sense of cologne, but I'm saying the spirit. She get a whiff of a pee and say, he's the one. They don't know a damn thing about that. And that's why they over here talking with that trick mentality. And most guys will end up being tricks because they want things that are not meant for them. It's okay if you drive a Toyota. Ain't nothing wrong with a Toyota. Toyota is a damn good automobile, ain't it? Yeah. I ain't driving one. But it's a damn good automobile. I drove one when I was 18. Yeah, I drove one when I was 16. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, carry on. We have Antoine Wade sent a super chat. He said, much respect to you. We come from different worlds and views, but I respect yours. I even bought your book, Keep Educating the Youth Their Way. I appreciate that, Saint. We have Jonathan Hemphill. He said, hey, can you watch Fresh and Fraud, zero to two minute mark? And tell me your thoughts since you said this. I sent you the link that I think he's referring to. Oh, this is a different guy. Shout out to uh, Justice for sending through tuition. Truly appreciate that. And by the way, we're winding down. So you'd be wise to send in your questions now by Cash Up and PayPal is a little easier for us to see them. So go ahead and get your questions in so that we can hit them boom, 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 boom. And then we can all roll out. I texted you before I think come in the computer the link this I think that he's referring to. Okay. So you said the title is the Fresh and Fraud one? Yeah, but this one that's called the Emperor Have No Clothes, Fresh and Fraud. Oh, I yeah. I didn't. I didn't pull that one up because I, I, I like kind of previewed it and it was a bit slow. I, I didn't find it to be very interesting. This is the one he wants us to look yeah, at. He, the, said, super chat. he yeah. said the emperor has no clothes. And what's the timestamp? No he said, hey, can you watch Fresh and Fraud, zero to two minutes, Mark, and tell me your thoughts since you said this. Oh, it's called Fresh and Fraud. But that's the emperor has no clothes. It has Fresh and Fraud after us. I think that's the one he's referring to. Okay. So we're going to do that. And at what timestamp? He said zero to two minute Mark. Okay, so fresh and fraud. at 36 years old. Okay, I put fresh and fraud. Okay, here we go. Boom. Today's topic. All right, so and what was the timestamp on that one? Zero to two minutes. 
So oh, from the beginning to two minutes? minutes? Yeah. Well, for damn sure, you're not going to send 10 bucks and say, watch two minutes straight of this. Like, that's a bit much to ask, Saint, but we're going to give you a little taste of it. You heard me? Because uh, that is a bit much to ask, right? And there's like, um, you know, that, <laughs> that's a bit, you're asking quite a bit. Um, and that's one thing a, a P tells her, her uh, excuse me, a P tells his workers, which is, hey, when them tricks start asking for a lot, you got to tell them, hey, cough it up. You heard me? And a real girl who got a P, just side note, a real girl, it don't matter if she's high end or low end. If she got a good P, a P is going to work that bread about you. Because a real woman, even if she's high end, I just want to correct some of these lies that these guys said. If she's high end, she's not going to give you great service just because she's high end. She's going to give you great service to turn you into a client. But the more you pay, of course, the service gets better because that's what you're paying for. But she's also going to be extorting you at every opportunity, upselling you. For example, you might be a missionary and she might say, oh, you want to go into to this other position? Oh, no, I don't do that position. Oh, you're going to have to pay more because that, that hurts. That hurts from that position. So that's how they're going to operate on you. Trust me, these whores, these harlots, these prostitutes, they, they do not love you. You'd be a fool to lay down with one of these women. They are using you and they look at you like trash. And certainly if you're using prostitutes, you probably look at yourself like trash. I'm not saying men don't get weak and you don't just need it in your life every now and then. But I'm saying if you have the opportunity to do something else, it's the best way. But I'm not saying as men, we don't get weak. I'm just saying this is not the best road, saints. I'm just saying that. All right. Now, let me hit this screen share and we're going to go through this video that the saint referenced. I'm just I just want to let you guys know this is best to be avoided. And by the way, um, the saint wrote uh, so much free game. It's only free if you don't pay. Right. It's only free if you don't pay. Um, but appreciate the acknowledgement all the same. And shout out to the folks who are, you know, showing the love. I, I really do appreciate the support. It means a lot. It just shows me that you care. All right, let's get this work in. Looks like the guys from Fresh Fit are really upset. We are better than you niggas, period. We want to know our thoughts. I'm going to keep it really brief. They right. made a lot of videos. I don't have much thoughts on their platform. Are they doing some good things for some people? I'm sure. I have no doubt. I'm not even denigrating that. We just came at them for their ideas with regards to uh, paying for box and all this stuff. Thought it was full of shit. I'm like, yo, real ass niggas don't pay for box? Even more, what I find really distasteful is you come to find out that Myron Gaines himself, right, the so-called pickup artist, the master, has his own Seeking Arrangements account, his own profile, all right? This is on the web. You can find it. This man's out here talking about don't pay for box, don't pay for box. It's on a website for sugar daddies and sugar babies. Okay. All right. You want to be a giant hypocrite? Do your thing, okay? Then you come to find out this man's talking about. So I'll say this. Uh, number one, I've noticed consistently anytime you point out that tricking is bad, like the tricks always get angry and they want to attack you because you said tricking is bad. Now, one thing that he did say is true. At some level, every male has tricked, even if they were tricked into tricking. You see, let me repeat that. Every male at some level has tricked, even if it was because they were tricked into tricking, because let us not pretend as though women are not extremely manipulative and clever. And sometimes they win. You dig? Sometimes they win and they catch a payday. But at the end of the day, even if I went out tonight and went to a strip club, peeled out all this money to strippers and then slayed eight strippers and paid them each a thousand dollars each, which I could do. No problem. Um, if I did that, I would fess up and say, yeah, I did that. But I would still tell you that it's wrong. I would tell you it's the wrong way. And I would tell you, ideally, I wouldn't do that. So the problem is when you have people doing the wrong things, but claiming that it's OK because they did it. That's not saintly. And that's exactly why I have to do my work, because I got to tell you that, no, like there's some things that are wrong. Like, for example, I was recently um, out in a resort and a, a gentleman that walked up to me and uh, he, I guess, was nervous and wanted to compliment me, but he was acting kind of weird. And I like kind of like snapped on him pretty quick. And he was like, oh, man, I just wanted to say, like, you just look so good, man. You got a great like the shirt is dope. The shoes are crazy. The backpack is dope. And I was like, yeah, bro, just say that, man. But like, don't, you know, don't act weird. And I had to catch myself. And I said, hold on, bro. Like I called him before he walked away. And I said, you know what? May I apologize to you because you were trying to come at me with a compliment and I could have 
addressed you with love and openness, but I snapped on you real quick and I apologize. That's my hang up. That was not within you. That was within me. And I know that because as you'll read in my book, one of the chapters is called Swing First. And so I was brought up in an environment that if you don't get off, somebody might get off on you. You heard me? So, you know, if if somebody got to get off, I want to get off first. And so I always snap quick. Like I don't play around with people if they seem goofy. And so that was just me in that environment. But when he encountered me, man, I'm in a luxury resort. It was no need for me to engage him like that. But your conditioning is kind of hard to get away from. I say that to say I apologize because I was wrong. Even though I engaged in an aggressive act, I'm not going to say just because I did that, it's okay. I'm going to say I did that and that was wrong. I apologize immediately. These boys are tricks and that's disgusting. And it's okay if you do it consistently because that's what you enjoy. That's your hobby. I would say, yeah, this is what I do and I'm going to continue doing it. But this is not the best way. And that's all I'm asking of them. Okay, Ivan Bash sent me a super chat. He said, it's way too lit with a laughing emoji. And we have Jose Nertis in a super chat. He said, like Pimp C said, you ain't got to give this trick. No, I think that's a cat emoji. It's yellow on yellow, so it's hard to see. No, cat, just cameras and screens. Easiest money you can get. It's the American dream. I salute you, brother. Peace to the saints. Shout out to the pimp. Shout out to all the Texas, especially Houston, because they pimping serious. You can carry on. I shall. Shout out to San. He writes, member. Shout out to the members at patreon.com slash the same. I appreciate the support. And it's doubly respected because he's a member and he's sending intuition. He writes, peace to the saints spitting some game tonight. Oh, yes, indeed. Okay, Solo Guzman sending super chat. He said, since the beginning, I sense something wrong with Abba. There's evil in his eyes. I'm glad that I'm not the only one thinking that. Peace to the saints. I don't want to put that on anybody. Um, I'm going to just say I don't want to put that on anybody. Okay, we have Ghost Percy sending Super Chat. He said, peace to the saints. I want to be successful entrepreneur, but being a short dude is a huge mental block and believing in it. How can I kill this complex? Much love. Get your ass to work, man. Ain't nobody got time for your <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, and I say that with love, Hike which is the, matter on business. Yeah, well, height does matter in business. We're not going to lie to him. If you're taller, it's going to be easier. There's no doubt about that. Work. But I tell you this, being black ain't easy. Uh, being whatever personal defect everyone has is not easy. Everyone has some setbacks in the game, but that's not what the game is about. The game is about the people who say, let's get it on. So uh, short, tall, small, fat, whatever your issue is, let's get this working. Because at the end of the day, I promise you, if you deliver the goods, people are going to buy that product, whether you short or tall. And I can assure you, the more goods you deliver and the more product you get sold and the wealthier you become, the less your height will matter. I promise you. And check out Napoleon Bonaparte, who is very well known for his small stature, but he had the game, though. You heard me? And game can get you everywhere. Notice, I can sit here and kick game to 2,000 people live. No sound effects. I'm not pressing any buttons with sound effects. There's no clips. There's no clever edits. It's just game. No gimmicks. You heard me? People respect value over time. Let's get it. Okay, we have the Black Monk. He sent a super chat. He said tuition. We have Milverton Saints sent tuition. And then we have Lee E. He said the F and F are, not, are now saying they are not tricking, but that they are getting women for free on the same tricking site. Don't tricks also play the long game. Ah, yeah. So number one, I don't know what they do personally. I don't know what they're doing on the site. And truthfully, I'm not interested. You shouldn't be interested. I don't even think Abba and Preach should be interested. And also when women are sharing personal text messages that they exchange one-on-one, -on -one, you see, if I were to, you know, like engage in that stuff, that would be like gossip type stuff. That would be me prying into another man's personal affairs, which I would never do because I don't expect another man to pry into my personal affairs, what's going on within my household and within my mobile device. That's your individual business. But if these guys say that they don't believe in tricking and they indeed are tricking, well, yeah, that would be hypocritical possibly. Or that would just be them saying, hey, my actions are not on the saintly level of my ideas. And there is a gap and I'm trying to close it. I would hope that's the case. But if they just line out the side of their mouth, that's possible too. 
but I don't know what the nature is of their usage of that website. It doesn't sound good to me. I could tell you that doesn't sound good. But if you could get on there and you could finesse something, finesse some of these chicks out they draws for the low or for the zero, absolutely do it. Um, but I don't know what they're doing on there. And I think that at this point, their contention has went down to a really petty level wherein you could tell they're hurt about you know people not accepting them as tricks. And in their effort to spread their pain, they're now trying to drag other people down and say, you're a trick also. You're a trick too. And that's just like, eh. It's like, look, bro, if you don't have any shame about being a trick, then you don't need to accuse other people of being a trick. See, because it's like, it's obviously a dirty word because you're trying to put it on someone you consider your enemy. I think that's something for people to pay attention to. Okay, we have Milverton Saints sent another super chat. He said, peace the saints. I've been watching you off and on for about a year, but I'm going to join the Saints and buy the book finally. It's my last name, so it's fate at this point. Peace. Absolutely. He didn't take a long ass time, but he didn't finally made it to the promised land. Yeah. So Saints do welcome him. He's a clearly a thoughtful man. And I also want to give you guys one piece of advice for success. Urgency is going to separate you from many people. When I, for example, I'm hiring right now for an additional assistant. And I judge people by how quickly they respond and how you know, forthcoming they are with information or putting their name out there. Urgency is a mark of a winner. Even the way people walk, those who walk faster tend to be more successful. So the Master Sun Tzu records, quote, haste can be folly, but delay is never wise. Haste, meaning rushing, can be folly, meaning a mistake, but delay, meaning doing things slowly, is never wise, which is to say, get to it, whatever it is, get to it. If it's worth doing, do it now. Here We're caught up? Fantastic. We're caught up here on this side. Saints, it's been truly a pleasure to have shared this time to fellowship with you, and I hope that the onlookers, uh, whether it's Fresh and Fit or um, Abba and Preach or any of their fans or, you know, people watching have been able to see deeper than the, this petty skirmish between these two parties and get the deeper knowledge that we've been trying to impart. And hopefully you've gained some entertainment, but also some values have been imparted. I appreciate you all being here with me. Let us end this the way we always end with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Say this with full conviction wherever you are, knowing that this is true of you. The creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I am going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace to the saints.